it's a beautiful day in the capital city of Arkansas. It's a 5A state championship. Little Rock Parkview and Shiloh Christian, a rematch from last year. Got a good one on our hands. I'm JB Brazil alongside me, Wes Moore, one of the greats in Arkansas High School sports broadcasting. Wes, it's going to be a fun out of football. Oh, it is. Uh, a lot of people have been looking forward to this game for a while, thinking this would be the game in 5A. And sure enough, both teams made it through the bracket and got to War Memorial Stadium. Of course, home for Parkview back at War Memorial Stadium where they played a lot of games this season and where they were last season, winning their first state championship in a long, long time. Now they're trying to go back to back. 31-21, the final a year ago. Parkview trying to make it back to back, as you said. Shiloh looking for revenge as we take a look at last year's highlights. Last week after Shiloh Christian and Bo Williams beat Pine Bluff, we talked to Bo and he said, we wanted Parkview. When we got to the state championship, we were hoping Parkview would be there because we wanted to knock off Parkview and pay them back for last year. Well, Bo and the Saints got what they want. We'll see if Parkview can do it or if they can get their payback tonight. Shiloh will have their hands full. They play some very tough defense in Parkview. Their offense is really, really good as well. We'll continue here on our pregame show back in just a moment. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Support your PBS station and you can get Passport, giving you full seasons, early releases, special collections, and more. Download the PBS Video app or watch online. Sports is, is so important to this state and the fabric of the state. And I appreciate Arkansas PBS doing all the state title games. And that makes it available for not just the fans in central Arkansas, south Arkansas, but fans around the entire state. I can only think of the kids in small towns. And this is the biggest moment maybe in their sports careers. And they have that keepsake of having that game on TV to have with them the rest of their lives. The commitment it takes to be a winner on the field is the same as the commitment Centennial shows its customers. Patience, perseverance, commitment, and resilience are key ingredients for success, both on and off the field. Whether you're cheering on your home team or needing encouragement starting a new business, let Centennial Bank help you make plans for your future. Centennial, for all of life's moments. Member FDIC. Five A state championship game, Shiloh Christian and Parkview getting ready for the kickoff. Let's take a look at how these teams got here. It was a challenging road for both teams. We'll start with Shiloh Christian. They came in second place in the West. Farmington knocked them off in the regular season, so not the customary one seed for Shiloh Christian. So they get a home game against Hot Springs, no problems there, winning by 36. Then they had to hit the road. Shiloh impressively goes to Valley View, knocks off the number one seed from the east, 42 to 30, then back out on the road again, taking on the number one seed from the central, Pine Bluff, and they went in 49-41, trailing at the half. Shiloh Christian comes back to get the victory, and now they're at War Memorial Stadium. That was a good game. You, you talked about it. A comeback win late to go on the road and to punch your ticket. And it was all doing part to their senior they look to, Bo Williams. Bo Williams does it all for them. You're going to hear Bo's name a lot. You're going to see number 21 a lot. 1,800 yards on the season. Bo Williams is so much fun to watch. He lit up Little Rock Christian Academy earlier this season. 37 touchdowns rushing, 22 more on the ground, or three on the uh, through the air. This guy is fun to watch. You're in for a treat tonight. Let's and then take a look at how Parkview got here. They were the number one seed out of the South. The Patriots had no problems in conference play and no problems in the first round of the playoffs. Shutting out Alma right here at War Memorial Stadium, 35 to nothing. Then Mills, a very talented Comets team, had their problems with Parkview. Parkview gives up their first points in the playoffs, but it was too little too late, 35-6. And then last week, right here at War Memorial Stadium, Parkview 
beats Camden Fairview for the second time this season, 42-13, your final. Parkview has mercy rule, 11 of the 13 teams they've played this year. Well, it's just really hard to figure out how good they really are. We know they're really good. A lot of people think they're the number one team in the state. There's a lot of guys you could key in on as who's going to be the key player to watch, but it was Eric McGee who won the 5A MVP title game last year. He's our guy to watch. Yeah, Eric McGee is committed to UCA. This guy runs a 4.37. He also set the school record in the vertical jump, 42-inch vertical. Oh, wow. As a quarterback, he's just gotten better and better and better. He may have had his best game of his career last week against Camden Fairview where he was 11 for 11. He hasn't thrown an incomplete pass for a couple of weeks. So, Eric McGee, keep your eye on number eight tonight. Well, we got a fun one on hand as we head down to the third member of our crew, Tyler Katz. Yeah, hey guys, it's a perfect, cool, crisp December evening at War Memorial Stadium. You guys just touched on the road to get here for both teams. I wanted to take it more literally for Little Rock Parkview, you know. We're playing at their home field. They're used to War Memorial, and if you can see, you know, they've definitely shown out. And for Shiloh Christian, it's new for them to have to travel so much in the playoffs. Not so new for them to travel to War Memorial, and you can tell. They've got enrollment from kindergarten through 12th grade, under 2,000. I wouldn't be doubt I'd be doubtful that there's probably more than that even here tonight. Both programs showing out fan-wise, and now hopefully showing out on the field And what's going to be a great title game rematch from a year ago. We're excited for it as we get set for kickoff. Not much longer to decide this one. Our keys to the game was. Yeah, for Shiloh Christian, we'll start with the Saints. Fifth straight trip to the state title. They got to limit the turnovers. This is going to be a tough game. They're the underdog. They know that. But any chance to win, they got to limit the turnovers and win the turnover battle. Parkview's got so many explosive players all over the field. Montario Money, Elston, Amari and Robinson, Eric McGee, the running backs, Jaden Ashford, Cameron Seven. They got to find a way to stop them. And then for Shiloh, they want to score early in this game. They want to get on top and then just be efficient with the ball, take care of things, and maybe that'll be enough to pull off the upset. Well, Little Rock Parkview trying to make it back to back. They hadn't won before last year since back in the 70s. They're trying to make it repeat, and boy, they sure are the favorite. Got good players on both sides. If you look at Parkview, they're 13 and 0 on the year. Shiloh Christian 11 and 2. Parkview's defense only giving up 9.8 points per ball game. It's pretty simple for Parkview. They got to slow down Bo Williams. That is their offense. You want to make Shiloh throw the ball. Shiloh can throw it, but they want to run it. So you want to take away Bo Williams in that running game. Defensively, Parkview's one of the best in the state. They limit opponents to about 10 points a game, 2.15 yards rushing per attempt. They got to keep up that intensity. And then don't give them anything. Don't give Shiloh anything. Bentonville, we saw with the turnovers, all those penalties, it cost them the game today. You do not want to give Shiloh anything today if you're Parkview. Well, Bo Williams in the championship game a year ago had over 100 yards rushing. His goal coming into this season was to have over 2,000 yards rushing. He's 125 yards shy of that. You got to figure if he has a night like that, 125, he puts his team in a good, good spot. He's got to have that. That's the only shot for Shiloh Christian. I don't think if Bo doesn't run for 125 plus, I don't know if they have a chance in this game unless Parkview turns it over and has some bad penalties and, and just hands Shiloh the game. For Shiloh to win this, they're going to have to go get it, and that means Bo Williams has to go get it. Well, we're just about set for the opening kickoff. Parkview will be kicking away. Shiloh will receive the football first. Solomon Aguilar will be set to kick it away for the Patriots. And Shiloh Christian set to return here. As we're just about set, Wes. We didn't even talk about special teams. That's another key moment, part of the game for Parkview. They've got a great punt return, great kick return game. Got to keep care of the ball and keep them off the field on special teams. Well, we are underway. Cohen Beach was the one who returns for Shiloh. Great return, good start. Now as their offense comes out onto the field, they'll have it just shy of the 40. Awesome start. When you have the kicker making the tackle, you know that's a good <laughs> kickoff return, and Aguilar was right there in the middle of it making the tackle. We look at the offense for Shallow Christian. They'll have a freshman signal caller, Cole Creighton, the starting quarterback. Bo Williams, the senior, will be in the backfield with them. It'll be Zane Slider, the receiver, Carton, Carter Holman, and Carter Henley, the other receiver. We'll get to the offensive line in just a moment. 
Pass play to begin. Quick slant route, tipped around, nearly intercepted. Cameron Settles, you're going to see him playing running back. Cameron Settles also plays defensive back. And when that pass was a little high, he was there to hit the wide receiver, unable to bring it in. And Cameron Settles with a good play on first down for the Parkview Patriots. The Saints go with the front line of Welburn, Dawson, Harris, Carlisle, and Nance from left to right. Williams to give this time, and he ran into a brick wall. One yard, maybe, maybe two, nothing going. You talked about the offensive line for Shiloh Christian, but that's the key for this Parkview defense. Jeremy Evans, Alex Martin, Marlon Little, Andre Williams, and they rotate guys. They're going to bring them in left and right, and they, the second string guys are just as big as some of the first string guys. Shallow Christian averages 268 yards rushing per game, almost 200 throwing. They're trying to go to the air here. And nowhere to go. Creighton hit as he threw ahead of his intended receiver. Three and out. Parkview's defense, they're looking good early. Defensive end Jeremy Evans comes around the end and is able to get some pressure on the quarterback right when he is throwing it. Jeremy Evans with five sacks on the year, just a second away from getting another sack. And now you see that Parkview special teams punt return game. They're going to send back Jermaine Penny for this opening punt return. You're going to see a lot of man-man. Omarion Robinson, he is a threat. The junior can do it all, but don't sleep on Penny. This dude is fast. Punts away from Griffin, and there's daylight. Got room to the outside edge. The 30 reverses his field, and he'll be stuffed right at the 30-yard line. So a good return there for Parkview and Jermaine Penny. Yeah, Penny's got elite speed. He, he ran a uh, 100 meters last year, 10.7. You get in those tens at 100 meters, you're flying. Jermaine Penny can go. They don't want to get. They don't want him to break loose in the secondary. As we look at Parkview on their first offensive drive, Eric McGee, the senior at quarterback, and he'll have a slew of running backs, really a, a three-headed monster. Cameron Settles, Jaden Ashford. We'll see Elston in the backfield a little bit as well. Kyrick Folks, the receiver, as well as Josh Moody and Davian Robinson as they get their first look here with less than a minute off the clock in the opening quarter. McGee pump fake throwing immediately. Got a man with plenty of room across midfield, down the sideline. All the way down to the 20-yard line. What a pitch and catch on the outside edge. That was Amari Robinson. That's man-man right there. This guy is one of the best safeties in the country, but they've been playing him more and more on offense this year because he's a great athlete and he can run. As you can see right there, Alabama, Arkansas, everyone has offered this guy as a safety, but he can play on offense too. A dream start for Parkview thus far. Three and out for the defense. Offense with a big play to begin, but this one is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. The junior tailback Cameron Settles had nowhere to go. Sid Scott, 74 tackles on the season. One of their best tacklers from the defensive tackle spot. Sid Scott's tough to move. They couldn't move him. He was right there filling the hole. A couple of personnel changes for Parkview. Shiloh got the opening kick. If you're just now joining us, a three and out by Parkview. Got a good return on the punt. One play later. Omarion Robinson with a huge reception. Puts him into plus territories. They give to Seldles left side. Cameron settles into the red zone, rumbling down to the 12. Parkview wants to run the ball. They've got the running backs to do it. That time it was Settles. You're going to see Jaden Ashford here in a minute. This is a running team. They have the big offensive lineman. They got an offensive lineman committed to A-State, Alex Martin. They got an offensive lineman, Tank Davis, committed to UAPB. These guys paved the way for the running backs. And it looks like we got a false start up front. Parkview with our first penalty of the game. It'll back them up five. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. So Parkview will head backwards five yards. And the way this offense is rolling, it's going to be tough even with the penalty. Time they got the left tackle, just moved a little bit, but when you're that big, every little bit movement's easy to see. Well, QB choice, it's going to be a keep for McGee. Not a whole lot to the right side. Good pursuit by the front line, and Shiloh with a good stop. Shiloh played that great. Yeah, he couldn't give it to the running back because there was somebody right there to take the running back. McGee kept it, but when he kept it, there was nowhere to go. Shiloh's defense was swarming, making it difficult for McGee to do anything on that play. 
Second down and 14. The Saints hoping for a big stop after that penalty. Empty setback. Move a man in motion. That's Elston. They're going to give it to him on the outside edge, and he had nowhere to go either. Swarm to the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Doesn't happen often. Montario Elston, they call him Money. That's his nickname, and Money is usually Money for Parkview. This guy runs the ball a lot. He catches a lot of passes. But look there, three Saints there. Here comes a fourth Saint. Great job of stringing out the play, and not giving Elston any room to run. Saints hoping for a big stop. Aguilar's only had two field goals all year, so you think in this situation it might be four down. Yeah, unless they get down to inside the 10, this is four down territory. McGee going to throw here on third down. Big play. Has nowhere to go. Going to try to scramble to the outside. Got room. Lowers his shoulder. He'll still be shy of the line of the game by plenty, but he's down to the 11. Now it's decision time. <laughs> Got to 11, 18, 28-yard field goal. I've seen Aguilar kick. This is in his range. One night I was at War Memorial Stadium doing a live shot, and so I'm there early before the game and watched him warm up and kick a lot of field goals. This, this is in his range. Now, Aguilar's two for two, so he's perfect on the year. This one will be from 29 yards. This will be a big one to put Parkview on top first. Scoreless with 7.44 to go in the opening quarter. Shallow's defense holding to a field goal. The snap's down. Aguilar's kick. Wobbly to the left. No good. He pushed it. His first miss of the year. And he likes to work it a little right to left. That time there was a little too much right to left. Kind of pulled it over there to the left. Nick kept hooking. No good. So that's a win for the Saints Media defense. Timeout. It's a win for Shiloh Parkview and the Saints scoreless here midway through the first. We all know the best ways to take care of our teeth, like brushing twice a day and flossing once a day. But there's another small thing you can do that protects your teeth in a big way. If you or your child is involved in contact sports, wearing a mouth guard is important to protect teeth. Mouth guards cover teeth and gums to prevent and reduce injury to teeth, lips, and gums. There are several varieties of mouth guards, so you can find one that is affordable and easy to use. A mouth guard should fit properly, be durable and easy to clean, and not restrict speech or breathing. Talk with your dentist about which mouth guard is best for you or your child's needs. At Delta Dental of Arkansas, we're proud to be the champions of your smile. For more helpful oral health tips and information, visit www.deltadentalar.com. You've spent years exploring Arkansas with us. Did you know Arkansas PBS is also here to help you explore your financial options to be more prepared for the future? Almost two thirds of Americans don't have a will in place. Your thoughtful planning of a will or trust can help protect you and your family. It can also help guide the future of public television in Arkansas. Explore your options. Request a free estate planning booklet from Arkansas PBS today. At Wendy's, we're focused on what matters. That's why we've made our hamburger square. When you want to experience the delicious taste of Wendy's hamburgers, squares the beef. Well, both teams get a stop. Shadow will have the football here for their second drive of the day. And Bo Williams had a great game last year, the state title here early. There's just nothing cooking. Kevin Ellis coming in from his linebacker spot. Met Bo in the backfield or actually at the line of scrimmage. Kevin Ellis, 48 tackles on the season. See 57 there. And several teammates wrapping up Bo. On second down, the freshman quarterback, Creighton, going to go to the air. Little gunslinger, sidearm throw, complete near first down yardage. He'll be shy by just a bit. That's a big play there on second down. Carter Holman's his guy. That's his leading receiver, 38 catches, 499 yards, nine touchdowns. Got Cameron Settles on him. Great route for Carter. It's about seven on first down. Now we got a flag. Shiloh jumped a little bit. Too quick there. Well, in a game like this, when it's going to be struggling to get offense, you certainly don't want that if you're Shiloh. Ball start. Oh. Offense. Five-yard penalty. 
Third down. Well, we just saw a false start penalty kind of derail Parkview's first drive. But now instead of third and three, it's third and eight for Shire. He worked so hard to get that pass and that reception to set up an easier third down, and now just shoot yourself in the foot. Third down play, play action. Creighton got a man on a deep curl route. That's first down yardage, a big play. And who else? It was Carter Holman again. Holman just goes to the other side, runs a very similar route. He's looking for him. He's got him. Parkview cannot tackle him before he gets that first down. Ramsey Cummings on the tackle. Creighton a 74% completion rate on the year. He's been out for a good bit as they go up the middle this time. Well, Williams with his first, it looks like more positive yards, four yards up the middle. They're just trying to get him going. Right tackle Jonas Nance pulled on that play and Bo followed him into the hole, picked up close to five yards on first down. They'll go empty set once again. Look out route to Williams and he is stopped. Nice open field tackle there. Ramsey Cummings on the closeout. A Ramsey Cummings, short tackle there. If he doesn't make that tackle, that play could have been a lot bigger. So once again, I feel like this is going to be happening a lot when Park Parkview's defense is on the field. It's another third long. That Carter Holman down here at the bottom of the screen. Number one settles on him. Creighton got a throw. Off his back foot, dangerous pass, airing it out, and it falls harmlessly. Really nowhere there. Kind of threw it up, hoping for a prayer. Incomplete, and it's fourth down. For Dalton Carnes there, he went deep. He had Amari and Robinson on him. There was a lot of contact, but it was like offense hitting defense, defense hitting offense. Shiloh fans wanted to call there. Of course, Carnes wanted that call. Parkview fans thought that was a very good play by their All-State player. How about Cole Creighton, the freshman? Playing at a big stage like this. He gets set to kick it back to Marion Robinson. He is a dangerous punt return man. Great punt. Just high, short, but that's okay. You just don't want Robinson to get that punt and have a chance to run with it. They'll take that right there all night long. Oh, hopefully that's the last time they punt, but when they do have to punt, you want a high punt to get your team down there and prevent the Marion Robinson from returning it. They don't let him make plays because he certainly can limit that I'm sure that's part of the game plan don't let that get I mean, you look at Parkview up and down we talked about it they've got Settles, Ashford, Elston, Robinson their quarterback McGee can make plays they're tough to stop because you can't single in on one guy no, explosive chunk plays and we've seen a couple of chunk plays already Parkview got down in the red zone and the Saints defense did a good job and stopped them so both teams have come up empty on each of their tries at the second Possession for Parkview, and they're going to hand it off on the left side. Ashford this time. Not a whole lot. Good pursuit there by the Saints, and they close out. Saints defenders had three guys there. As soon as Ashford broke one tackle, there were two more Saints there waiting on him. Second down and nine. Shotgun for McGee. With twins to both sides, he's going to throw. The coverage is good. He'll have to scramble. Down the sideline. Complete. There he goes. One man to beat. Ontario Elston to the house. Money helping out his quarterback. He ran a, just a little. He, he didn't run much of a route. They, they were going to throw a bubble screen to him. It wasn't there. McGee goes to scramble, and Elson just takes off down the field. McGee sees him, puts it on the money, two money, and then you see the speed pulling away from the Shiloh defender. Well, a busted play, great coverage from Shiloh. McGee kept it alive, and then Elston did what a good receiver does with speed flying down the sideline. Kansas State is recruiting Montario Elston. They, they told Brad Bolding he's the best player in the country. Wow. At the state, the best player in the country. Now, Coach Bolden said, look, I know they're trying to recruit him. They're trying to entice him to come here. Parkview believes he's the best player in the state. You just saw why right there. Only thing holding him back, preventing him from being recruited by the Alabamas, the Georgias, the Arkansas of the world, he's just a little short. Kansas State doesn't care. They've had some success with small players like Deuce Vaughn, now with the Cowboys. Aaron Squirrels, who was a heck of a player. They see him in that same mode, and they want him to go to Kansas State. I think it's plays like that, games like this, more offers are going to come. 
I know earlier Sam Pittman and Bobby Petrino were here. I do not know if they're still here. I would hope they are since Amari and Robinson's playing in the game and they've offered him and they've also offered a Parkview linebacker, Ja'Cory Smith, only a sophomore. I hope they saw that and they were impressed by that because I've been seeing plays like that all year long. I am convinced Montero Elston can play in the SEC. Their offense is really, really good. Let's check in with Tyler for an update. Yeah, guys, I'm just over on the sideline during that short offensive drive. The defensive line was all kind of gathered around the little film setup they've got, and the message from the coaching staff was clear. Make nine throw the ball. They're keying in on Bo Williams. They know that that quarterback from Shiloh Christian is a freshman. They kept emphasizing he hasn't been here before. We're going to try and make him throw it. That's what we've seen so far, Now we'll see if they do that again on this drive. They're trying to take away the run and force the freshman to step up for Shiloh. Well, Parkview strikes first. They lead it seven to nothing. Just a matter of time with an offense like that. And it will go to Bo Williams in the kickoff. Got some daylight left side, and he is submarine to the 33. Not a bad return, though, as he sets up shot for his Saint offense. Yeah, good tackle there. Goes down low, brings him down. A good short tackle. Was that Elston on the tackle for Parkview? Was that number one? I think it may have been. He's all over the place, isn't he? Yeah, so much for being too small to play, right? He's on special teams, <laughs> making the tackle on one of the Saints' biggest players. Shiloh on their third try of the day. They're 0 for 2. This Parkview defense has just been too much so far. QB rollout. Throws it over the middle. Bobbled and caught at the 40-yard line. That was a nice play. Creighton over the middle to Dalton Carnes. Yeah, Carnes bobbled it just a little bit, but was able to bring it in. Throws it back just a little bit, gets hammered, but catches it. Good play there. Kevin Ellis with the big hit. That's what makes Parkview so tough. Even when you make a play, they make you earn it. They hit you hard as Creighton with the carry to the right side. Gets a little bit. Still going to be shy of the line to game by about two yards. Creighton, only a freshman. Played in seven games. He got hurt this season. But Creighton, they know he's the future. You're going to see Evan Baker, their second-team quarterback, at some point tonight, they said, as Bo Williams dives ahead and gets the first down. But Evan Baker filled in very well for Cole Creighton. But when Coach was asked about that, Coach Barnard earlier this week, he said, look, no, Cole Creighton's our starter. He, he's back. He's, he's going to be our starter. But you'll see Evan Baker at some point. We don't know when, but you'll see. First to 10 after the give to Williams. Creighton keeps it, and he is leveled right near the line of scrimmage. But there is a penalty flag on the far side, and we'll have to see what that's all about. Marlon Liddell. Boy, that was a big hit from a big man right there. He leveled Creighton. We're get, about to get our call from our head official. We're still waiting to sort it out. Now, here we go. Legal formation, more than four in the backfield. That penalty is declined. Second down. Well, that call there from our head referee, Daniel Faulkner, is the head ref. Richard Hammond's the center. The umpire's Greg Long. Our head lineman today is Steve Strom, and our line judge, Chad Walker. David Ward is the back judge. Today's contest to decide the 5A state champion, a rematch from a year ago, a 31-21 thriller that Parkview came from behind to win. Eric McGee was the MVP. Is Creighton thrown, intercepted by Ellis. He jumped the route. He's trying to take it to the house. Patriots in again, pick six, Ellis. Ellis had seen that route enough. He said enough of that. I know where you're going. Drop back in coverage, picked it off, goes the other way. The second big play for the Patriots. Just saw a 67 yard pitch and catch from the Patriots and now Ellis taking it back to the house. How about the agility there? Boy, to jump in front like that. His second interception of the year. He just read that. Saw Creighton's eyes, jumped the route, and he puts his Patriots up by two scores. I'm going to call it 52 yards officially. It's 50, <laughs> but it looks like he caught it around the 48-yard line. And for the second straight year, Parkview gets a pick six in the state finals. 
Aguilar's extra point is good. 14 nothing. Little Rock Parkview on top of Shiloh early. I told you earlier, Parkview's defense gives up about 10 points a game. That's the average this season in the playoffs. They've been outstanding. But that's something else they do. They take the ball back and score defensively. Uh, Marion Robinson has scored this year. This is a team that's op opportunistic on defense. They don't want just a turnover. They want to take it back and score on defense too. Well, when your defense is scoring points and you've got an explosive offense that you got, it certainly makes it hard to recover. Shiloh Christian has dug themselves a hole 14 to nothing. This game began seemingly harmless. It was a battle of the defenses. Shiloh Christian, a three and out. Parkview kind of stalled after a false start. A missed field goal. Felt like it might go back and forth a little bit, but boy, when you wager against Parkview, it's only a matter of time before they put points on the board. Yeah, one of our keys to the game, Shiloh Christian had to avoid big plays. We've seen two big plays, and it's 14 to nothing. Well, the Patriots have jumped out to a two-score lead just got so many playmakers it's so tough to slow down but shallow christian they got to get their offense going got to figure out a way to do that got to put points on the board and so far they have stalled bo williams is their guy and i look for them to try to get bo going on this drive you know we thought with little rock park you, you talked about 11 of the 13 games they've mercy ruled so their starters haven't gotten a lot of time sometimes that may mean that they're not as you know in game experience because they hadn't played as much that certainly has not been the factor today at all well, several weeks ago i spoke with defensive coordinator bobby bolding before a game and i was like how are you guys y'all healthy he said man we're really healthy we don't have any injuries <laughs> we're, we're only playing our guys for a half and he said that's our biggest concern we, we don't know what we're going to do when we have to play four quarters. Yeah. So we're trying to keep our guys in shape by doing stuff during the, the middle of the week and trying to keep, you know, running them, keeping uh, keeping them from getting too, uh, too much out of shape from not playing enough football. But he said that was their biggest concern. We don't know how we're going to react in the four-quarter game. We talk about head co or defensive coordinator Bobby Bolding, his brother, head coach Brad. Bobby Bolding was the 2023 High School Brewers Award winner for the best assistant coach in the state of Arkansas. And then the year before that, his brother, head coach Brad Bolding, was the 5A coach of the year. So they, they come from a, from a family of winning and championships, and they certainly reflect that. Buzz Bolding's here somewhere watching this game, <laughs> and right now he's got a smile on his face, but he knows it's a long way from being over. As they went to Bo there, I figured they would. They got Bo four yards on first down. That's what they need to do. Just relax a little bit and place the ball. They're going deep. They got somebody. Drayton had him, and it's in and out of the hands. Boy, that's a tough one. Griffin Mason, the sophomore down the sideline, and he wishes he could have another crack of that. I want to see a replay on that because they had Ellis matched up in coverage way down the field. You don't normally see the linebacker down the field that much, and yeah, that was hard. He was in the tough matchup right there and Shiloh Christian almost took advantage of it that's a play they need to have how about the arm of the freshman Cole Creighton that was a absolute rocket down the left sideline just a little bit out of the reach of Griffin Mason and a big third down play Creighton the keeper trying to beat it to the outside edge and he is swallowed up tried to escape Colby Davis and he couldn't do it Davis with his 39th tackle of the year third on the team that time you see the speed of Parkview. He had a hole, look at the hole. He had room to run and when it first happened, I thought he may get the first down, but Kobe Davis closed so quickly, shot out of a cannon, gets there. They got one yard out of that play out of a big hole. Griffin was a nice, that nice hole. They did a great job blocking it up, but it was the speed of Parkview right there, the closing speed. They had a spy on him as well. And that was a great job on the defensive side. Mason with a booming kick. But it'll bounce back, take a Parkview roll, and then it'll be down to the 34-yard line. So Little Rock Parkview with just their third possession. They had to pick six a moment ago. Just their third offensive possession of the game. They're one for two today. That time Parkview didn't send anybody back to field the punt. They must have felt like uh, maybe Shiloh would try fake there. So they were playing safe. Uh, they, kept a, they kept an eye on the punter and everybody else to make sure that wasn't a fake punt. And hey, why not? You know, with the way your offense can score at any moment, it makes it so tough to cover because you got to cover them for three, four downs. Hey, if they're going for a fourth, you got to cover them. You can't take a play off. It will make you pay, and Parkview has done that. A big strike, touchdown to Montario Elston, and then the pick six from Ellis. You got Elston in the backfield this time. Keep an eye on number one. 
They're going to give it off to Elston. Cuts up, finds a seam into the secondary. Dancing around, still on his feet. And they'll finally corral him at the 41-yard line into Saints territory. Elston was a step or two from taking that one back to the house as well. Ran into his own man. Uh, you look here, he breaks into the open. Great hole, good cut back right there. I thought he was going to cut it back left. He did. He was trying to, and he ran into his own player. And that may have prevented the touchdown right there because when he gets a full head of steam, I don't know if you're going to catch him. McGee going to give it off to Elston again. This time, not a whole lot of room. Three yards inside the 40. He's up second down and manageable. We talked about McGee. You talked about Elston's got speed. Robinson's got speed. Well, so does Eric McGee, the starting quarterback for Brockview. He runs a 4 3 7. Yeah, and Penny may be the fastest out of all of them. <laughs> well, this team is very talented. And, and what Coach Bolding likes, and he was bragging about it, how strong they are. How many guys bench more than 300 pounds in the squad over 500 pounds? This is a big physical team. Just take a look at the offensive line, how big they are. This, this isn't just an athletic team. This is a big, powerful team on the offensive line. Going to throw McGee, slinging it over the middle. Caught, then dropped. Is that a fumble? They're going to say it was an incomplete pass. I thought initially that's probably the right call. They were just late to blow the whistle. That one could have been dangerous for Parker. And that's the first incomplete pass Eric McGee has thrown in over two weeks. Last week he was 11 for 11. He was 2 for 2 to start this game, and that's a drop. He put it on. That was a good pass. It was a little low, but still got to catch this. I was about to say it wasn't much his fault. Yeah, he bobbled it, and then it came loose. Hey, look at it. We have a booth review. And all turnovers, potential turnovers. I don't know if he ever had it long enough after that bobble. I think, he, I think you're right, still bobbling. Little design comeback screen to Elston over the middle. Open field. He's dangerous to the 31 near a first down. It's a big third down play. If you need a play, go to Elston on third down. Every time he touches it, I think he's taking it to the house. I mean, he caught that in open space. I thought he was going to juke the guy and take it around the corner and score. Great job by Shiloh Christian. Let's see who made this tackle because he stays low. It was a little team effort, but that's how you got to tackle some of these guys for Parkview. Not just one. You need three guys there. That's what happened there. Parkview is going to say, you know what? That's good enough. Let's go to the end of the quarter, and we'll decide what we're going to do on fourth and one in the second quarter. Parkview on top, 14 to nothing on Shiloh Christian. Step aside, you're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Looks like we have some new health in the marketing department. Action! Hi, I'm Susie Everett with Everview DMC. I think you need to work on your line better. How about you do it? Family owned, customer friend. Family owned, no friendly. <laughs> Come see us at Ever Buick GMC. I-30 at Alcoa, Alcoa Exit. But bless everybody. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by. Give your family a once-in-a-lifetime experience at the Little Rock Zoo, at Arkansas's largest lantern festival. Glow wild at the Little Rock Zoo. After dark, bring your family to a radiant wonderland where imagination sparks. Discover 40 new lighted mystical creatures and returning favorites at Glow Wild, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. When you choose Conway Regional, you're choosing a healthcare partner rooted in your community. With nine primary care locations in five counties, we believe in building lasting relationships centered on trust and personalized care. Let our family care for yours. Vaping addicts you to nicotine and can prematurely aid your lungs to those of a 70-year-old. Don't get lost in the fog. Learn more about the hazards of vaping at projectpreventar.org. Southern Loft is a proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS. It is our mission to tell your story by adding color with our furniture. And that's why Southern Loft is a different kind of furniture store. 
more information, go to mysouthernloss.com. The Arkansas Department of Health is proud to support, spotlight, and celebrate Arkansas student athletes and Arkansas PBS sports. Escape the vape. Learn more about the hazards of vaping at projectprevent.org. It's a big fourth down play, and oh my goodness, did Parkview jump early? I think they did. A little shift by Shiloh got him. We've seen more and more teams doing that, especially Full here start. at the state finals. Offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Sometimes the uh, defensive linemen, you know, to tell, talk to each other, they'll do a little hut, and they'll jump, you know, and they'll move to one side, and that causes the uh, linemen for Parkview or the opposing team to jump a little bit. But they got to have some kind of signal to communicate each other. Now's the time that we're going to change our gaps. Sure. So we saw it called earlier today. Uh, Fayetteville was called for mimicking. Yes. Wow. This is a big play. Shiloh needs a big stop here on fourth down over the middle. Overthrown in and out of the hands of the Saints. Get a very much needed turnover on down. Kelsey kind of slowed down on his route right there. Was kind of stopping. He thought, uh, and McGee thought he was going to keep running. So it was out in front of him a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, actually, it just went right through his hands. Uh, may have seen that defender coming. See, uh, Shiloh had that very well defended. A.J. Lannon was there to uh, break it up or at least make him think about that catch. So a big stop for Shiloh. They needed that. I mean, they could not afford for Parkview to go down and score another touchdown. Creighton's going to give it off to Williams up the middle, rumbles across the 40. That's a big carry. Tyler's got a word for, him, for us as we head to the sideline. Yeah, guys, just before that last Parkview possession, the Shiloh defense was gapped. They were saying, guys, we've done a pretty good job so far, except when Eric McGee kind of gets out of the pocket, scrambles, and tries to create things. We need to take away those big plays on broken plays, and you just saw the outcome there. They keeping Parkview contained to the, the line of scrimmage, and you get a turnover on downs. Creighton, the keeper here to midfield, first down yardage. It looked like it was almost a fake, like he was going to throw, and then he QB keep all the way to the left side. I think that was a quarterback keeper, a designed run. He was just standing there in the pocket, waiting for something to develop, and then took off and run. I think you could hear it. Uh, maybe you could hear it at home. I could hear it from up here. The Parkview bench yelling, holding, holding, holding. They <laughs> felt like that left tackle was preventing the defensive end from getting outside to make that play. So big first down, a little bubble screen on the outside receiver, and not a whole lot there. Plus yardage for Carter Holman, about five yards into Parkview territory. Well, Marion Robinson getting up off the ground. Shiloh going fast. They want to hurry up on this play. Just trying to get some type of rhythm and some momentum after they trail now 14 to nothing. Not going to happen here. Williams is absolutely blown up in the line of scrimmage. Montavian Goins, Matt Hill on that left side, 48 tackles on the year for Goins. Take a look at the read right there. Just met him in the hole. That's just one on one, and Goins has the power to stop Bo Williams in his tracks. He's so good at matching up one on one. You got to make a man miss. You got to make something happen. Shiloh just hasn't been able to do it. This Little Rock Park view defense is absolutely legit. Creighton airing it out, lobbing it too far. Is it caught it? No, it's intercepted on the far sideline. It was overthrown, got too much air underneath. Big play from Cameron Center. Yeah, the running back plays cornerback, and uh, I thought when he picked it off that he might try to do something with it because he's got the running skills. I was just about to say how impressed I was with the Shiloh Christian offensive line. They are giving Creighton all day to throw. He was standing in the pocket, looking down the field, checking this option, checking that route. He was able to survey the field, finally found somebody open, but just put a little too much on it, overthrew his receiver, led him a little bit, and Settles comes off of his man and makes the play. That's the second time that Creighton's tried to go to Bo Williams and it's been intercepted. You got a feeling that the freshman, he's got the talent, no question, but a game like this, making some questionable decisions and, and forcing things a bit. It's McGee on the offensive side for Parkview. Looking to run, got a man behind him, hit as he throws, and it is nearly intercepted. In and out of the hands for Shiloh. Tristan Carpenter couldn't quite haul it in. 
Yeah, McGee did a good job of scrambling around, but he did not know that that defender was coming from behind. And right when he was winding up to throw it, he gets hit. It affects his arm and almost had that one picked off. That was the big play Shiloh Christian needed on defense. Well, they've turned it over twice now. I have the Saints. They need a big turnover against Parkview to try to really kind of stay in this. It's still a good ball game, 14 nothing. not even very far into the second quarter. But if you're Shiloh, you really don't want to go down three scores as they give it off outside edge. And dancing around, that's Elston. He's got near the first down. He'll have it to the 39 before they finally bring him down. That guy in space is so electric. You're watching at home. You're watching this. Am I wrong? Can this guy not play in the SEC? Well, I, from the looks of it, a guy like that in open space, he, he, he kind of reminds you of uh, maybe Isaiah Satania uh, at Fayetteville, obviously playing at, at the U of A. He's just got speed in open space. When he's out there, it's tough to bring him down. As Coach Bolding says, he's got those special hips that when he's running, he can all of a sudden move his hips and start running sideways, and he doesn't lose his speed. It's that vertical, vertical mobility. Almost moves as fast that way as he does up and down the field. McGee keeps it this time, stays alive, dancing around into Saints territory. A big run for the senior quarterback. We saw his speed that time. We mentioned it early. He ran a 4-3-7. Verified 40 at the UCA camp and right here just turns it on and explodes Boy, it's Tough to bring a, down a guy like that as well Elston's a little bit more explosive in open field But McGee well, he, he feels like he can keep up with the rest of them well, the coach was asked this His position in the future is a quarterback at UCA. He's like, yeah, I think so McGee thinks he's a quarterback McGee <laughs> isn't our quarterback they think he can play, but he said, man, he's so fast. He could play something else if they need him to. The pocket collapses. McGee scrambling. Room to run, and he'll finally run out of bounds. Near the first down, I think he's got it. Boy, that's what makes him so dangerous. You, you finally got good coverage in the secondary, which, mind you, is tough to do against receivers like that. Pocket collapse when McGee escapes. There's no one there to get him. It's frustrating for a defense, too. I mean, you do everything right there. You did everything right. And you, you got pressure on McGee. They almost got yeah, it. Yeah. And he, he just used that speed to get away, outrun the Saints, get to the sideline, and pick up the first down. Well, Amarian Robinson will be in what maybe they call the Wild Patriot. Moves Elston to the left. He's going to keep it himself. Robinson inside the 25-yard line to the 23 before they finally bring him down. Goodness, we've talked about this, and we're probably beating a dead horse. But when you got Eric McGee, the quarterback, Elston, Robinson, Settles, Ashford. Yeah. How do you stop that? It's tough. It's very tough as we've seen so far. And what a luxury, too. McGee's been scrambling around, running for his life, maybe a little winded. So, you know what? Let's put Robinson back there, run a couple plays, let him catch his breath. This time they'll do it on an end around pitch play to the outside. And it's a good run there for Elston. They'll have another first down. The Saints were there. They, they were they, they had the play the, the DB comes up to make the tackle and He just shook him. I mean just plain and simple made the little move made him miss and picks up some more yards it's The shiftiness right there the tough thing for Shiloh to do and this is easier said than done You've got to figure out a way to contain and push things to the middle as best you can Against an offense like this. That's what's killing it among other things Park is just to so tough to stop as they give it off to Ashford a couple yards over the right tackle, and that's really for the Saints. It's a pretty good stop, only giving up two or three yards. You know, Parkview is a running team. That's what they like to do. But we've seen with McGee scrambling around, making yards, getting the ball to Montario Elson, running around. They make you defend the entire field from sideline to sideline, and because of the threat of the speed going deep, you got to stay back as a safety so nothing gets over your head. That's exactly right. They're going to give it off Ashford into the secondary touchdown Parkview. Well, touchdown of the season for Jaden Ashford and that whole the great job by the Parkview offensive line. They just wear you down, wear you down. You start worrying about the edges and then, oh, yeah, don't forget. They can just hammer you right up the middle. That's exactly what they did there. Had a pull and blocker leads the way. He wasn't really touched until right at the goal line. What a hard run yard line. Ashford They're getting it done from everyone Solomon Aguilar to attempt the extra point if your head coach Tucker Barnard for Shallow Christian I mean what do you do you got to be scratching your head 
Extra point is up and good. It's oh, oh it did. What did it hit? It hit it something to bounce back. I was looking at the referees. I didn't even see it bounce. I'm glad you said something. I nearly missed it. Oh, it 21 to nothing. Parkview up three scores. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. Hi, I'm Jay Schwanke, the host of Life in Bloom. I want to thank viewers like you who make Create possible. Your gift goes a long way in keeping public television channels, including Create, on the air. Nailed it. Perfect. And if you're not a member, please consider supporting your local public television station today. That's it? That's it. Easy. Easy, <laughs> easy. Thanks for watching. Well, we just saw Jaden Ashford score a touchdown for the Parkview Patriots, and we want to honor Jaden Ashford from Little Rock Parkview High School. The senior has a 4.0 and plans to attend college and major in pre-med. Big shout out, congratulations to Jaden Ashford. Well, what timing right there. Yes. Scores before we come back on break, and then he's our highlight. Wow, that's impressive. Is Aguilar kicking away again? Bo Williams back deep in the middle. With 8.06 to play until halftime, Little Rock Parkview up 21 to nothing. They'll go on the outside edge. The 20, or near the 20 yard line, finally brought down Chandler Kent, who was the one on the return for the Saints. And not going to have great field position, Wes. He's got to hit that and go straight up the middle. Uh, with the speed of Parkview, we've been talking about it all night. You cannot run from sideline side to sideline against Parkview and the special teams unit. You got to catch that. You got to go north south, straight up the middle, and get as much as you can, and hope that you get that key block that that gets you sprung, so you can have a big return. Well, you know, we talk about it as if it's easy to do. Obviously, it's not. But if you're gonna have a chance if you're Shiloh, you, you've got to figure out something. Digging a hole down three scores is Creighton's gonna keep it himself across the 25. Part that's Evan Baker into the game. They put him in for the first time. I thought maybe they would make that change here. Uh, Cole Creighton was 5 of 11 with two interceptions, so he was off to a little bit of a rough start. We knew we were going to see Evan Baker at some point, and he's a good runner. Uh, he's already rushed for 1,400 yards this season, or through for 1,400, almost 1,000 yards, 978 yards. Uh, so he's hoping to go over the 1,000-yard mark tonight. Well, you need a weapon like that to help Williams get going a little bit. Well, Williams can't carry against a defense like Parkview. You've got to have give him some breathing room to be able to establish his running game. Yeah, it's crazy. Every team they've played, they know that the guy to stop is Bo Williams, but yet he still had 1,800 yards, 70, 1,875 coming into this game. So they've been able to run it. And a lot of credit goes to the offensive line. This is a very good offensive line for Shiloh Christian, but this is a really good front seven for Parkview. The most rushing yards that Parkview gave up all year was 165 yards to Bryant. They knocked off Bryant into that big winning streak. On the horns as they, as they complete outside to Holman on the rollout. This is a Parkview team that does not allow you to run. If you're going to find some options, it may be in the passing game, but it really makes it difficult to run on a defense like this. Ramsey Cummings comes up, makes that tackle. Not much there. It is going to be fourth and two, and it looks like Shiloh's going to go for it. Wow. Early in this one, 21 nothing, big play. Going to roll out right side. In trouble. That's Creighton. Loses the football. Parkview down the sideline. He scoops it up. Wow, that was Amarian Robinson who falls on it. It was fourth down. It didn't matter anyway, but he, he wanted to scoop that one up and take it into the house. No doubt about it. Amarian Robinson wanted the touchdown right there. He bent over, picked it up, just couldn't keep his feet, fell forward, and uh, falls down. But Parkview is going to take over with great field position. They were wanting to throw something quick. Uh, but Parkview was all over. I, I was watching. There's nobody there. He, he can't throw it. There's nobody open. There's Robinson. Picks it up. Oh, his own man clipped him. I didn't see that live. 
He picked it up. He didn't really fall down, uh, but one of his teammates clipped him and caused him to fall. And now Robinson will be the one taking the snap. He'll keep it. Left side got a hole, cuts it up, wide open into the end zone. Touchdown, Parkview. Coaches said, you know what, that, I feel bad for you. You should have had your touchdown there, but one of your hustling teammates knocked you down. We'll let you have it here. <laughs> Here's your opportunity to score. Well, he did not disappoint. Robinson read the defense, had a huge hole, and then he did the rest. Look at the blocking right there, or mauling. I mean, it's wide open, makes one cut, puts his left foot in the ground, turns it up, bam, touchdown. Aguilar to attempt another extra point. He's three for three today, make it four for four. Parkview, they're up 28 to nothing on Shiloh Christian with 6.39 to play in the half. And, you know, I tell you, Wes, there's a lot of things you could point on, but really it all boils down to Parkview's just made the play. There are a lot of people in this state, I'm one of them, I believe Parkview's the best team in the state, that they should be ranked number one in all the polls. And I know some people have them number one, but one of the media polls I saw had them had them number two. They may be trying to make a statement, you know, uh, because in the previous polls, Bryant was number one, which is strange because Park, you beat Bryant. You yeah, know, if right. you beat him on the field, to me, how can you be, have him ranked ahead of him? On the road at, at that. Yes. And, well, Bryant's already lost. And so you're going to put Greenwood number one. You're going to put Fayetteville number one, both undefeated. Or are you going to put Parkview number one if they hold on and win this game? But they make a statement like 11 out of 13 mercy rule teams. They do it again. I don't know how you don't make them the best team in the state. Yeah, I'm with you. And, and then you go and look at Shallow Christian. They're not a bad team either. They beat a really good little Christian team to begin the year. They've just ran into a brick wall in, in Parkview. And they, like you said, they're trying to make a statement. And what Shiloh Christian did the last two weeks to go on the road and beat Valley View, a very good Valley View team that was the number one seed out of the East. And we all know how talented Pine Bluff is. Pine Bluff won yeah. the 5A Central. They went on the road and beat them. Back-to-back -back weeks going on the road, beating a number one seed. They were trying to do it for a third straight week this week. Now they got a lot of room to make up. Bo Williams trying to create some room. He'll get out to the 30-yard line. Not a bad return for Williams. You saw he didn't dance sideline to sideline. Kind of found a seam, kept it at an angle, and then plowed forward. Yeah, that's how they're blocking it up. They're trying to to get to the sideline and, and find they have obviously seen something on tape. They keep doing the same thing, trying to hit one of the sidelines, and they're blocking it that way, but just haven't been able to get to the corner, turn it up. Well, the Saints trailing 28 to nothing. They desperately need some offense. Cole Creighton, the freshman quarterback, back out there. We only saw Baker for one, maybe two plays. Creighton was the one who fumbled on the last possession. He's had three turnovers today. The freshman unloads, making another. It is picked off. Oh, it's going to be in. Well, I think he picked it off. He caught it and threw it down. That's what I thought. That was Marion Robinson. Back-to-back -back turnovers for the junior for Parkview. Just read the route, picked it off. Yeah, they're, they're calling it an interception. They're saying Parkview ball. Shiloh's offense is still in the field. They, they're stunned, honestly, I, as a lot of people are. They're just stunned. Ball was high. Mario Robinson just took it away from him. Yeah, he had it the whole way. Catches it. Turns. He's down. And while he's getting up, he, he, the ball squirts loose. They're going to look at this. Um, we'll keep looking at it. But from the naked eye, I think he caught that. And he lost it as he's getting up. He did, Hate to say it, but it was looked like a Clint Sterner move where you put the ball <laughs> down on the ground to oh, no. your balance, and that I mean that's what happened. And You're right. ball squirted loose when he was standing up. I think that's going to stand, and that's a that's an interception. Well, you're right. The initial thought for me was that's the fourth turnover of the game. But what we saw in our vantage point to the right, the ball squirting loose, you thought, well, man, did he, is it an incompletion? You're right. He, he's got that all the way. I think by the time his knee connects with the ground, he's got a good control of it. I think he knew it. Regardless, if you're Cole Creighton and Shiloh, hasn't had the most accurate passes, and he's really put his offense in a bad position. And the hands there, too, by Marion Robinson. Just caught that with his hands, took it away from the defender. There's one more look at it. I it's pretty clear. They're still talking about it. But has it there. 
And then he, he brings it down and has it with one hand. I mean, he's got it up against his body. And now he's like a basketball, just palming it. And he's got it. It's not coming out. It's right fine. There. He's down. Um, and he just puts the ball down on the ground to stand up. And then it squirts out of his hand. So yeah. Yeah, he's still got a great grasp of it as he's kind of pushing the ball away. I, I'd be shocked if they overturn this. Well, it's supposed to be clear and obvious to overturn something. Uh, you know, the NFL sometimes gets a little nitpicky. Uh, <laughs> for them to overturn anything, it's got to be clear and obvious. They've, they've emphasized that to us time and time again. Well, Shiloh Christian, it could be very, very costly. Already down four scores. You feel like the game is slipping away here midway through the second quarter. You, you really just hope you're hoping that somehow it wasn't in completion. They overrule it because you're about to give Parkview the ball back in great field position once again. Well, they're a touchdown away from being up 35. If it stays that way to halftime, then we've got the sportsmanship rule in effect. And Parkview's done it 12 out of 14 times this season. Man. That is crazy. To think that they've done that to so many different teams, it's so impressive. After review, After review. the ruling on the field is reversed. It'll be second down. Wow. Well, Wes. Shiloh might have caught a break, and that, that they really need to utilize that. I, I'm shocked. Speechless. Stunned. I, uh, I don't know what they we, – we can talk to them. I'll talk to them at halftime. Um, they're good guys, and they, they've told us before, anytime we have a question, um, I have a question. Uh, I'll go find out, and I'll have a uh, second-half report for you. Get back with your homework, huh? Yeah, Robinson, I mean, I, saw, I was watching when they announced it. He's like, what? What do you want me to do? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm standing up, and the ball squirted out of my hands. That's like, that's an NFL call right there, like completing the process. Complete, you know, you got to complete the catch, you know, that, that. but that's not high school. And well, I think they – I disagree with that. Robinson, it would have been his third interception. His previous two were pick sixes, so he still remains perfect on pick sixes. His interception tries, but, man, he gets – one taken away. Baker's the quarterback this time rolling right side. Parker, you didn't like the call, and they swarm on defense to show, and they made a nice play. But there is a flag down, and that might. Okay, we'll see. It, there's a lot of different things in games like this, but we'll see what this call is all about. Face mask. Five, Five yards defense. Remains second down. Shallow's got a couple of gifts. I was over there on the far side. It was uh, hard for us to see. I never did see that one. Five-yard penalty, five penalty, so it wasn't the major type of face mask, so it'll give them second and five. The shotgun, Creighton, the freshman, still in. Got a man, Holman, to midfield, complete and bumped out of bounds. Boy, I've said this a couple of times. That interception reverse was big. That face mask was big. Shiloh's got to ride that somehow. Carter Holman just ran an outstanding route. Basically turned the corner around and was wide open. Good throw on the money. Now they got the ball out by midfield. Saints need to keep, I hate to say it, let's just say moving down the field. I was going to say marching down the field. They need to keep moving down the field, getting first down after first down, putting a drive together, and getting to the locker room with the touchdown. Creighton's got a good arm. He threw a strike on that last one. They'll give it off to Williams up the middle. Had a hole for just a moment. Gets a good little bit, three to four yards up the middle, but, boy, just a half second sooner, he might have had a lot more. Good job by the offensive line, just running that one right up the gut, able to break through the first line, pick up five yards on first down, maybe six. Yeah, give him six. Bo Williams now up to eight. Carries 22 yards. That was his longest carry of the game. Creighton gonna give it to Williams again. Tries to bounce it outside. Trucks a man. First down yardage inside the 40. Bo Williams absolutely leveled the defender. Back to back, excellent carries for Bo Williams. That's exactly what they need. Able to get to the inside, hits the corner. That's Cameron Settles. Settles holds on, drags him down to the ground, but not until he got the first down. That is two really strong players going head to head. Settles really battled well. Williams the carry to the right side, two, three yards there. And Shiloh, well, you desperately need to score before the half, certainly. Williams is your go to guy. See the strength there. It looks like he's going to be down. It just keeps moving his feet, fighting forward, trying to get some extra yards. 
Bo Williams now three straight carries. He's up to uh, 29 yards. Ah, make it 31 after that two-yard carry. They're going to say he was down when he after yeah. he lunged forward. He was down before that. That's why it's only a two-yard carry. But just got in there behind his offensive lineman, followed him into the hole, and picked up a nice little gain on first down. Well, Bo Williams wants to get over 2,000 yards for the year. He'll need about 94 yards more. Four forty-three to play in the half. Parkview is up twenty-eight nothing. The timeout. Shiloh Christian trying to drive, and they desperately need to keep the offense rolling and not turn the football over. Arc Air is a proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Arc Air network of medical clinics and pharmacies helps to keep you in the game, playing your best. Arc Air, so you can live your story. Well, out of the timeout, Shiloh Christian. We're at the 37-yard line here at War Memorial Stadium. JB Brazil, Wes Moore alongside with me, and Tyler Cass on the sideline. Out of the timeout, second and eight. Craig, going to go deep. Got a man, complete. Touchdown, Shiloh. Carter Holman over the middle. Another excellent route. I mean, Carter Holman putting on a show running routes. That was absolutely fantastic. The throw was perfect. Exactly the drive Shiloh needs. They take advantage of the huge break on the overturn on the replay, and they cash in, get six points. The freshman to the junior, Holman, puts his Saints on the board, and Austin Evans will be on to attempt the extra point. It is blocked. It is blocked by Parkview. This still remains a 28 to 6 ball game. Boy, they do it on every side of the field, don't they? Yeah, somebody got up and blocked that. Didn't look like too bad of a kicker. I get an angle here at the stadium. Uh, came in from the side. Got the uh, penetration and from the side blocked it. Well, Shiloh Christian, though, they're on the board. That was the first step. They've got a lot more things to do. Parkview well in control of this one. Now with 437 to go in the half, if you're Shiloh, you got to figure out a way to stop Parkview, which you haven't been able to do yet. I was wrong. That was uh, one of the big guys in the middle, 77 or 78, got their big paws yeah. up and, and blocked that. 77 is getting uh, credit for it. Landon Kennedy, a junior offensive lineman, plays left guard for him. He got a little penetration, got his hands up and blocked it. Well, that'll help him out. He's got a couple of D1 offers. And he is a very good player. With 4.37 to play in the half, we'll head down to Tyler for a quick update. Yeah, guys, just before that last possession, when Baker went in at quarterback for Shiloh and Creighton came out, Creighton was looking kind of visibly upset with himself, started going to the bench. One of the assistant coaches grabbed him and said, no, stay close, you're coming back in. And then you saw just that. He came back in and got exactly what they needed as far as building his confidence back up. Baker's staying right by the head coaches, too, on the sideline. I wouldn't be surprised if we keep seeing kind of the two-quarterback approach the rest of the way based on what Shiloh wants to do offensively. Thank you, Tyler. Shallow Christian, the swim kick. They did not want to allow Robinson or Elston a return. And Parkview will have good field position. But hey, having it at the 37, if your shallow beats, kickoff return for a touchdown. Well, and too, sometimes you do that little swim kick, and guys aren't paying attention. It bounces, take a crazy bounce, and you're there to recover it. It works just like an onside kick. Parkview did a good job of building that and going down with it. We were talking about Landon Kennedy, only a junior, but he has offers from Grambling, Jackson State, SEMO, UAPB, and Coach Boulding thinks he's going to have a lot more before it's all said and done. There's quite a few youngsters on this Parkview team that will most likely find their way in the D-Win ranks sometime in their future. Elston still on his feet on the end of round. He's still going. End up getting back to the line of scrimmage after all of that. I think he broke three tackles. I think so. Every time I thought he was about to go down, he broke it. I think he wanted at one point on a tackle to take it all the way to the other side of the field. Uh, but the pursuit of Shiloh, and that's why you gain tackle. That's why when coaches talk about gain tackling, there's your great example because he broke a tackle. There's another guy there. Broke that tackle. Well, here comes another guy. Broke that tackle. Well, here comes another guy. It was just the uh, pursuit of Shiloh, the no-quit effort. That was what finally was able to get Elston down. Swarming the football. McGee's going to keep it here. 
A little quick out route into the flat, out of bounds. Finally pushed there. The completion to Kyrick Folks, the sophomore. He's second on the team in receptions behind Elston, and he's a go-to guy. Got three touchdowns on the year, but his first reception in the 5A state title game. Goes six foot one, 170 pounds, and they've got him at a four-five-seven forty as a sophomore. They think he's one to keep an eye on for the future. And we'll have some offers and get to play college ball at some point. Eric McGee from the pistol this time. Gonna throw in the flat. Got a man. That's Elston. Dancing around. Don't let him get free. Lowers his shoulder. Still on his feet. Cuts it back inside the 30. And they'll finally bring him down the 28-yard line. Elston, he just finds a way to sneak free. And he's just so, so fast. But you're not entertained. I mean, this kid's just fun to watch. I mean, unless you're up in Northwest Arkansas watching this and watching Shiloh and you're rooting for them, it's not very fun to watch. But, I mean, he just makes people miss. And I know there are coaches that think he's too small and he'll get hurt. But if he can't catch the guy to hit the guy, he's not going to get hurt. That's exactly right. They're going to give it up. Nope, keep it up the middle. McGee, he's got speed. Rumbles inside the red zone near the first down marker. That'll move the chains. Parkview on top by 22. Look at that little juke move from McGee. They got some ballers. Parkview just finding ways to move down the field. I, I just don't know how you stop it. Saints got to find a way. This this could be a backbreaker. You go down and score. You get a little momentum. You got to find a way to keep Parkview out of the end zone here. Get a stop somehow. Maybe hold them to a field goal. They've done that before earlier in the first quarter. First drive for Parkview. They got to get a stop. They're going to give it off to Settles. Bounces off one tackle. Lowers his shoulder inside the five, and they'll finally bring him down. They had a chance, Wes. One guy hit him, but Settles bounced him off. And you, you see some of the players getting a little deflated. Uh, Holman just had the great play on offense, and he's playing defense. And, and you see him over on the background. He'll be on the left side of your screen right there. It's just like, oh, man, we had him. We had him. We got to get this guy down to the ground. We're that close. Well, Settles bounced off Shiloh's leading tackler, Carter Henley. He leads the team with 101 tackles. And if your leading tackler can't bring down Settles in a play like that, that tells you all you need to know. They're just so tough to stop. Parkview's going to call a timeout. They didn't like something. Maybe the personnel, the, the way Shiloh had that defended. Their second. Coach Ben Berg, offensive coordinator, quickly decided to call timeout on that play. And they'll uh, discuss it and figure out what they want to do here on first and goal from the four. For a copy of any state championship game, go to mnmproductions.net to place your order. We've had uh, five. This is our fifth state championship game. We've got a couple more next weekend. But if you want a copy of those, there's where you go, mnmproductions.net. I tell you, Wes, this is the final state title game of the weekend. We'll have two more next weekend, but we saw Fayetteville won earlier today. They claimed the 7A title. Last night, Little Rock Christian and Greenwood faced off. Greenwood won that one. The 2A game, Bigelow won their first state title, the eight-man championship. Rector pulled off the eight-man state title. A lot of fun this weekend. Parkview's trying to make it back-to-back. -back. Shiloh's trying to keep that from happening. You know, Shiloh's been here five years in a row they've only won it once they're trying to reverse that but man they're, their backs are against the wall here early in this before halftime let's take a look at some of the stats Montario Elson now has four catches for 100 yards wow. in the first half out of the timeout from the pistol McGee gives it to Settles carrying tacklers to the goal line we're waiting on the call I think he's just shot yeah, we're gonna say he's down right at the one Settles 19 touchdowns this season. He's been kind of their go-to guy down here at the goal line. They also run the quarterback sneak a lot down here at the goal line. That's what they're going to do here. McGee's just going to get in there behind them, get a little bit of a push. And he's into the end zone. I've seen it time after time. You've got the, the uh, push push with Philadelphia. It seems unstoppable. I've seen it so many times with Parkview. They just get in behind Cash Williams, Tank Davis, Landon Kennedy. Mark Carius Hill, Alex Martin. Those are big, strong offensive linemen. They get a big push. And Eric McGee just gets in behind them. Sometimes he'll get a push from one of his running backs. That time he didn't really need it. This falls into the end zone. Parkview scored in so many ways tonight. Defensively with some, some touchdowns. They've had the big plays. That one was more methodical. March their way down the field. Milk some clock. 
Shallow's going to have to have that two-minute drill to try to get points on the board before halftime as Aguilar's extra point is up, and it is good. 35-6, to six. Patriots on top of the Saints here before the half. And, Wes, there's not a lot of time left, but Shiloh's trying to figure out a way to build some momentum and just kind of find a way to keep themselves in the game. Parkview goes seven plays, 63 yards, and chew up all but a minute 47. So you're exactly right. Uh, that's what Shiloh's, that's what they're talking about right now. Guys, we got to get another score. we got to go in the locker, to, locker room, have a little momentum, and, and narrow this down. Right now it's a you know four possession game. Let's get a touchdown, make it a three possession game. Let's start chipping away, chipping away. You can't get all the points out on one drive, but we can get six or seven or eight since they uh, had that block. They go for two from here on that's out right, or right. on the next one, but that's all we can do. Let's go score before we go to the half. Well, Parkview will get the football to begin the second half. That's not good news for Saints fans. But they're more worried at the task at hand. They got to protect the football and they got to find a way to score on this drive. Is Aguilar getting set to kick the football away? Shallow's only glimpse of hope was on that last drive on the big strike to Carter Holman. Aguilar approaches the football. And it will be taken by Bo Williams at the 10-yard line. Got a hole across the 30, and he is drilled right at the 30, crossing the seam. Montavian Goins with a big stick. Well, well, Bo Williams hit it. I mean, he goes north and south like I've been wanting him to do, and he is depleted. That's what they call a depleter. I mean, he's hit and goes flying. Just a big time collision. Perfect legal hit. Face mask right into the shoulder pads, right in the chest plate. That's the way you teach it right there. Brayton gonna throw. Trying to go back to back. Big ball. It is intercepted by Cameron Settles. He's still got it room to run. Breaking a tackle near sideline across midfield. Inside the 35, and Parkview's thinking, hey, guys, we can score again. That's a big interception. The exact opposite of what Shiloh wanted. They wanted to drive down there, trying to hit him with the big play. Had man-to-man -man coverage, Settles running with the wide receiver, and Settles turns wide receiver. He sees the ball in the air, just goes up and gets it. Settles sees it right there. He outruns the wide receiver. Earlier, we saw Carter Holman get behind the Parkview defense. This time, Settles is with him, running with him, outruns him to the ball, picks it off, and then does a great job of returning it inside the 35-yard line. Shallow loads the box. They had McGee as the signal caller. Now they're going to move it around. Little reverse in around the trick play. McGee got a man. Elston to the sideline. Jukes a man. Touchdown, Parkview. Oh, money. That guy is spectacular. We just told you he had 100 yards receiving, four catches, 100 yards, one touchdown. Well, he just added to it there. Just a nice little stop and juke. Two touchdowns receiving for Montario Elston. Wow, he is a special talent, and he is putting it all on display tonight. Aguilar's extra point, his sixth of the, day, of the day. That one is up and good, 42 to six. Let's head down to Tyler for a sideline report. Yeah, guys, the whole Parkview offense coming over to the sideline after one, shouting, show them, show them, show them all. You guys said it before. This is a team that believes, even though they're in the 5A, they can hang with anyone in the state, and they've definitely been making a statement in this first half. 42 to 6 Parkview. Wes, obviously Parkview's a great team. You gotta credit their defense, but the Saints have really not helped themselves. Oh, the turnover after turnover. Back to our keys of the game. That's what we said. They've got to win the turnover battle. They cannot give Parkview anything. In fact, they need to create a couple of turnovers. That hasn't happened. I mean, you look at the, the number of interceptions, the, the fumbles. And, and don't forget, there was an interception that was overturned that we disagreed with. That's right. That led to Shiloh's one touchdown. Uh, that's been the issue. They have not been able to take care of the football. 
Parkview has, and they've taken advantage of all those turnovers. That's now four turnovers, and Parkview has scored off all those turnovers. We saw that Creighton is a great quarterback, especially for a freshman. Felt like he might have been getting a little desperate, trying to go to the big ball a couple too many times, going to the well after he got one from Holman and gets that one picked. Uh, you know what? It's a 50-50 ball. You, you, your receiver, your best wide receiver is running one, you know, man-to-man -man down the field with settles. You got to give him a chance. That time, the receiver didn't win the battle. The, the cornerback did, and Settles is a ball-hawking corner. We know he plays running back, and he's a, a good running back, but he's got ball skills, balls in the air, and he wanted it as much as the wide receiver and went up and, and, and got it. Well, and, and in a game like this, too, for Creighton, it's a lot to ask of, of a guy in a game like this with a defense as good as Parkview. You know, it's, it's tough, and he's made plays, but give credit to the Parkview defense. They have bowed up tonight making a statement. Okay, now Shallows, they got a score here, or the game's it, it, it's over. I mean, because the mercy rule will be in effect when we hit halftime with it being a 36-point lead. And I think it's only happened once or twice in history, team being mercy ruled, and they come back and win the game. It just doesn't happen because there's not enough time. Once that clock just starts ro rolling, it just you never see it happen. So for them to have any kind of chance, they have to score here and get this within 35 points before we get to the half. So the rule is at halftime, if you're trailing by 35, it's a continuous clock in the second half. So you're right, if Shiloh does not score at least a field goal, the clock will not stop in the second half. Creighton with the pocket collapsing, gonna have to find a way to keep it alive. Throw is gonna be incomplete. Well, it might be caught, but it's right at the line of scrimmage, so no game. They'll bring up third down and 10. 34 seconds left in the half. Parkview playing deep. You know, they're keeping everything in front of them. They have two deep safeties now. Marion Robinson on one side. Ramsey Cummings on the other. They want to make sure that there's not that deep ball, that home run throw for Shiloh on this, on this possession. With 34 seconds, Old Creighton and the Shiloh offense desperately needing some offense on third down and 10. UB rollout, designed rollout. Going to go big. Left side, incomplete at the 40. Tried to go deep. The intended receiver was Dalton Carnes, but it was incomplete. Carnes had a step on the defender. Ball was slightly underthrown. Had to slow down a little bit to try to catch it. And when he did, that allowed the defender, honestly, uh, hit him in the back. He, if he'd have turned around, he would have had a chance to intercept it. But no, that was a good call. I don't think there should have been a flag. It was just kind of lucky timing Personal for foul. the defensive back. 15-yard penalty. The result of the foul will be a first down. They threw that flag in the backfield, so I'm not sure. Maybe it was a roughing the passer or something. Or maybe it's just a straight personal foul. I didn't get a good angle on it, but it's a 15-yard penalty. Shallow needed that because it was going to be fourth and ten. They were going to go for it anyway. But now they'll have it at their own 41-yard line with 28 seconds. You got a handful of plays left as long as you get out of bounds. Yeah, huge play. Huge mistake by Parkview. Creighton going to throw here. He is in trouble. Scrambling. Throws it to the sideline. It was a safe play, just threw it away, led Holman well. Well out of play, second down and 10. Jeremy Evans came from his defensive end spot, broke free, was chasing down the quarterback, and Creighton just had to get rid of him. I tell you, this game, you figured Parkview had the advantage. This is their home field throughout the year, so that obviously helps. But boy, the point, because a lot of teams come here. Now, Shiloh's been here. I mean, these, these seniors, the juniors, they've all been here. They played here every year. But for some, they get here to War Memorial Stadium and the bright lights, the big stadium, the TV, the stage. It's, it can be tough to play in, but this is every Friday night or every home game for Parkview. Right, deep right sideline, never had a chance. Holman was the man, had his man maybe a half step, but the throw was over to the sideline. Holman and Settles matched up again. Settles was running side, stride for stride with him. Pass was just too far over his head. You know, the problem for Creighton right now is Parkview's playing off the ball. They know they're not giving up the deep ball, so he doesn't have a ton of separation. Creighton really has to make almost a perfect pass. We'll go quick to Bo Williams. Not a whole lot to the 48. Shallow's going to have to call a timeout. They're not calling a timeout. They're going to let the clock roll. They're going to let it roll. I, I, yeah, I got to think. There they go. They got it finally. 
Oh, hold on, Parkview. They got the timeout. They're, they don't timeout, realize it yet. Timeout, timeout. Christian. That's their first of the first half. Now, I'm really shocked, Gus. They didn't call a timeout Please soon. Please put one second on the game clock. Uh, I guess they, th they felt like they're just going to try to throw it deep, a Hail Mary here at the end of uh, the half. I don't know how many seconds were left when Bo Williams caught it and went down. But even if you've got 10 seconds, you got to get the first down here because it's fourth down. But the reality is it doesn't matter if Punk you get the ball left with time left or not. They're going to have the mercy rule. It, 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 they have the advantage regardless. You've got to get yardage. Yep. Yep. He was playing for the fact that, you know, it's fourth down. If we don't get it, we don't <clears throat> want to give turn it over to Parkview here at midfield, and they have a chance to score another touchdown or do something crazy with their athletes, that, you know, throw it up, Hail Mary, whatever. He just wants to make sure this is the last play of the half. That's right. So you get that, that point for sure that you don't want to give Parkview the football back. However, for Shiloh, Wes is, I mean, you could almost say if they don't get a touchdown here, they're, they're really in a lot of trouble. Yeah. With the continuous clock, the odds of that happening. Of course, sticking around, you probably never said, I've never seen it. So you may see history. <laughs> Come back up for a continuous clock. That'd be something. Yeah, that would. They're going to go on a quick slant to Holman. Going to have to revert fumble or throw it backwards. He couldn't do it. No lateral. Parkview swarms. And they will the head to the halftime half. locker room with a 42 6 win. The mercy rule is on. The continuous clock will be on for the second. Half and I tell you, I mean that's just that is tough going, tough slotting. Parkview dominant in the first half against Shiloh Christian West. As we wait on Tyler to get with Coach Bolding. We have to uh, get after our radio partners. They uh, they got Bolding before we did. That's not supposed to happen. Well, here we go. Let's head down to Tyler right now. Hey, I got here with Bolding and Coach. I mean. So many takeaways for the defense already. What have they been doing so well? Man, they just we've done they've done what we've asked them to do. We worked hard all week on you know, our reads and our eye discipline and being where we're supposed to be and then gang tackling is another thing. Because you know, Bo Williams is a heck of a back. So I've been real proud the first half, but you know, we gotta come back out the second half and play hard because these guys are not gonna quit playing. Yeah, it's the Shiloh Christian team that we saw last week come back from a big deficit. Just what is the message then at halftime? You know, you, we got it's zero to zero. I know that's what everybody always says, but it really literally is because these guys are not going to quit. They, they got big hearts. A situation like this is one you guys have found yourselves in before several times this year. Your starters haven't had to play a lot of second half state title game. Do we see the guys back out there? Yeah, well, we'll see what happens the second half. We appreciate you. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Coach. 42 to 6, Parkview dominant in the first half. Stick around here as we head to our halftime show. And as we send it back to the studio, it's Shiloh trailing by 36 to the Patriots of Parkview. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. War Memorial is more than just a stadium. It's very much part of the culture of Little Rock. 75 years of history lives here. Jones. Looking, step, throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Arkansas! So you grew up coming here watching your heroes play football. But the stadium stands for strength. Built in 1948 to honor those who gave their lives. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe. Always keep going. This stadium is more than just a memorial, it's a monument. A monument to the sacrifices of the past. The stadium stands for strength, sacrifice, for the drive to always keep going keep pushing for a better Arkansas or a better tomorrow because legends are made here
just the way win is. You know, it's called the city with a smile. Whether it's a Friday night football game or it's a family in need that's going through a hard time or it's a community going through a tornado, the people of win rally around each other. We have a serious situation, a new tornado warning in the city of Wynn. Wynn, Wynn. You need to be in your tornado safe spot right now. There's I grew up here, graduated from here in 2000. A lot of memories here. Wynn High School, there's a lot of tradition here. I've been here my entire life. All my family's went here. It's, it's been very big. The school year was going really normally. I was actually uh, in the middle of like classes and stuff, not expecting anything to change. Yo, we were excited because it kind of felt like it was the first year post-COVID. It's my senior year. I went to play college football. Uh, I was in off season for football. Uh, I was playing soccer too. And we were really excited. Things were going along um, all the way up to March 31st. And the last thing in the world on our mind was having a tornado destroy our school and our kids yet again not having a normal year. That radar is showing you uh, the hook echo that just now went through wind. That is a debris ball just to the east of wind. One of my maintenance guys called. He said, you got to get down here. He said, the school's gone. You know, the tragedies happen. You know, the storms hit. We, we can't, we, we had our moment of, you know, just breaking down. We can't stay in that moment. What do we do to help our community? I got a call from one of my buddies and he told me the turf was in his front yard from the football field. Right after I hear that the tornado hit the field and there's no football, and I'm thinking, okay, what's the next what's the next step? Like, what are we gonna do? We were right out here on that field and there's debris everywhere. There's tile. It's the first time we really got to meet with the team. They got bulldozers behind their bulldozing their school. You know, the kids look on their eyes is like, what kind of nightmare have I woke up to? It was a, it was a surreal feeling, something I'll never forget. We have to find a way to make sure our kids don't lose anything. They don't lose prom, they don't lose graduation. Obviously with the field being nothing but gravel, we went to a church field for spring football practice because we didn't have turf. We've been out on the grass. We just kind of made the most of what we had. We could have easily sat back and just said, man, what do we do? But that's a, a testament to our leadership. It's a testament to our teachers, uh, our students, to put in the extra work it took to get us to that point. Once the temporary campus got done, it was an easier transition. It was more of like a normal school feeling. They did a great job getting our facilities back. I was in pads. It was, it was an amazing feeling to get on turf. From the difference from turf to grass, it was, it was an amazing feeling. I always, you know, lived through the kids, and, uh, well, they were teared up. You know, it was a, it was a, it was a big, big deal for sure. Looking in that stance, seeing the win community all back together, everybody that stayed through adversity, it was all a very come together moment. That's an awesome community that we live in here. We're playing pretty good. So many fans packed out every game, and it's just not that they show up when there's loss or when there's when there's grief. They show up for everything. That's what they do in Whitehall. Mr. Doris, our superintendent then, brought him in. You know, you think that someone that played in the NFL and a big star quarterback, he didn't come off like that at all. You could tell he was getting ready. He was ready to get to work, and he was excited to be the head football coach. He just comes in and he introduces himself, and he immediately flashes this huge smile, and cracks a joke, and it's his laugh. Like he always had this laugh. It was a working relationship, but then it turned into he was literally my best friend. Well, you knew who he was when he got here, but he didn't want that. He wanted to just be Ryan. What he brought was a big heart for the kids, a huge personality, just a simple, humble man is what I saw. He wanted to give back to kids and give back to the sport that he loved. Coach Mallet always said Ben was the first football player that he met when he came. The house he rented was right across the street from Ben's house. He knew that Ben was going to be special. He said, man, I love that kid. Please join me in a moment of silence as we remember Benjamin Ritter. Here to accept Benjamin's diploma is his mother. I 
I woke up that morning with some text messages and calls, and a couple of those calls were from Coach Mallett. When Ben passed away, that's when I really found out how close they were because of how bad it wrecked him. It changed him. It really, really did. I cared for him a lot. He was like my son, basically. <laughs> it's just, it's tough. Hey, when you lose a kid like that and know that he was going to go off and do great things, and uh, that one, uh, that one hit me hard. It's just sad seeing Coach Mallett react the way he did. He went on the field and hugged everybody on the field and started crying and told us all that he loved us. We all used each other to kind of piggyback on, try to look to each other for comfort. Everybody was there for each other. Mallet being the name that he was, you know, fake media or whatever, posting stuff when we text the group chat, yo, is this real? I was like, there's no way. So I called him. I was like, there's no way it's true. Let me call him. And he didn't pick up. I was like, wow, this is real. So I was in shock. I had just talked to him about an hour and a half before. I just melted to the ground. The feelings and the emotions were so raw. You can't hardly describe it unless you're in that moment. To be honest, it didn't seem that it could possibly be real. Our district had lost students. We had lost a coach that our kids adored. It was more than what we could handle as a district. As a whole community, I think they came together to help us football players out. They had counselors from every school, even elementary schools there. Knowing that they were there for us helped out a lot. It's just the outpouring of affection and, and love that they show in this community for you. Is, it was awesome. It was about what you expect from Whitehall. They were, they were there. Just that outpouring of love that was felt in not just our community, but surrounding communities in the state, just as the love that was shown to us, um, it's healing. And we as a community can get through this. We've gone through all these things, and every day we are moving forward. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. You ready? All oh, right, absolutely. Hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. Let me see it, let me see it. It's the final game of championship weekend here in Hot Springs. It's a sold out crowd. Here we go, tip off is set. Back with a right hand, tie ball game. When you gonna wake up? Y'all gonna wake up when the season over? That swung on, lifted high to right field. He's going back to the warning track. It's out of here. I can kind of look at people and tell if they doubt me. You know, you can kind of see their entire expression kind of change right when you make it. They get it to Williams, throws it down. I mean, she just stepped up and nailed the biggest shot right there. Hazel Walker, she at halftime would challenge anybody from the stands, and I never saw her beat. The sun is setting in Saline County, and we've got 4A baseball, a title's on the line. It's kind of just as simple as like a superhero putting a superhero suit on. Down to 10 seconds, upside to Harris for three. He rattles it home! Rester gives it off, right side, the 10, 5, whoop the dog, touchdown! I think that's the, what I enjoy most is just knowing that you're part of something more. Scotty Pippen wouldn't have been a Scotty Pippen at another school. I've just been another player. be a fourth analyst. Coming to find a pass. Time has expired. He's got to throw it, and he's going to take it to the end zone. Spike to the end zone. is batted away. The Brand Hornets are four-time defending state champions in a classic of a state championship game. I'll coach you on that. Sports is, is so important to this state and the fabric of the state, and I appreciate Arkansas PBS doing all the state title games, and I can only think of the kids in small towns, and this is the biggest moment maybe in their sports careers, and they have that keepsake of having that game on TV to have with them the rest of their lives. Truly one of the unique stories in Arkansas sports history. When you go through something like that that stirs your heart, you remember the people that stuck with you. I play guard and tackle, and I love hitting boys.
work for it. That's the main part. You know you can do it and you're capable of it. Just pursue it. I'm so proud of you. I couldn't stop smiling at the end of the game because I was just thinking about what it was you just did. You went out there and competed. Team on three. One, two, three. <laughs> I see why coaches don't like you. I celebrated my fifth birthday, and it was a few weeks after that the uh, soldiers came. We saw two soldiers marching up our driveway, and literally at gunpoint, we were ordered out of our home. And so you end up in a place called... Rohr, R-O-H-W-E-R, Arkansas, locked up. And the amazing thing is thousands of young Japanese American men and women went from behind those barbed wire fences, leaving their family in imprisonment to fight for this country. Those that perished on those bloody battlefields and had their coffins covered with the American flag, those flags were brought back to their wives or their parents still behind American barbed wire fences. Those incredible, crazy young men who fought and died for this country, they were the greatest generation. They made my America possible. <laughs> Thirty minutes left to decide this one. Forty-two-six Parkview on top. As we head down to Tyler, he's got Coach Barner. Hey, Coach. Obviously, a rough first half. What's the message to the team now in the second week in a row? You guys have to come back. Yeah, we just got to plug away, one play at a time. Um, you know, we're not gonna, we're not going to quit. I mean, these guys got no quit in them, so they're just going. Give it everything they can, try to stack a good play on top of a good play. This first possession out here on defense, just what kind of tone do you need them to set? Yeah, we, I mean, we got to get a stop, obviously. So um, we're going we're gonna to play hard and do everything we can to get a stop and see if we can get a uh, touchdown on the board. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck out there in the second half. Well, as we mentioned, 30 minutes left to decide this, and Wes, quite frankly, it might just be 30 minutes as the mercy rule is in effect. We'll have a highlight for you, but it's pretty lopsided. Parkview all over the place. Yep, Parkview came out early, first turnover of the game. Cameron settles with the interception. We've seen a lot of settles. That was the first big play for this Parkview defense, and they'll turn it into points a little later. Monterio Elston goes 67 yards. It was seven to nothing. And then they got a pick six. Kevin Ellis made it 14 to nothing. Ashford goes in for a touchdown. And then later, it's uh, Marion Robinson there. 14 yard touchdown run. That made it 28 to nothing. Shiloh Christian finally got on the scoreboard. That's Carter Holman. 37 yards from Cole Creighton. That makes it 28 to six. The Parkview just keeps battling back. There's another interception from Cameron Settles. They turn that into points when Montario Elston goes 32 yards for the score. Elston in the first half was outstanding. He has five catches, 132 yards, and two touchdowns. There's a look at your first half stats. 346 total yards for Parkview, 189 through the air, 158 through the ground. No third down conversions for Parkview. I don't know what's wrong with them. Oh, they've only had two. That's how explosive they've are. They've only had two third downs the entire first half. They're over two. Time of possession pretty even because Parkview scores so quickly, so they don't have the ball very often. And it's 42 to six the turnovers. That's the the key part of this game. You can't you can't win a game turning it over four times and not creating any turnovers. And, and not only turning over the football, but turning it over to a team in Parkview that doesn't need any help scoring. You give their offense opportunities, they're gonna capitalize. This is a first half, 346 yards total in the first half. Uh, that's just very impressive at any level to do that, especially here with the 5A state title. Hey, it's not over yet. Shiloh's got a lot of work to do and they really don't have a lot of time to do it with the continuous clock as we get set for the second half. Park views we mentioned, they'll get the football to begin the second half and it'll be the continuous clock. And quite, uh, and quite frankly, you could say from the moment this second half starts, Shallow Christian has zero room for error. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. Um, it's going to be a very difficult, tall mountain for them to climb to, to get back into this game. Uh, they'll have to have some turnovers. They, they need some help from Parkview. They need Parkview to put it on the ground. They need Parkview to throw an interception, maybe a pick six, something like that. They're going to have to be able to score quickly. 
and and then obviously on offense they got to score on every possession because you're not going to have that many possessions in the second half with the running clock. That's right. Well, I'm also interested to see if Parkview is going to play their starters in the second half. Every Mercer rule they've pulled them. Will they play some? There's Robinson and Elston out there back deep for a return. Elston back as Evans getting set, but the football falls down, so we'll have to reset it up. Well, this is a state championship game, so I don't think any coach is going to be offended if you're down 36 points and the starters are still out on the field to start the, the second half. And I don't think any fans will be upset about that. you got to play your starters. There will be a point where this game is in control even more, and it's probably needed that you pull your starters but you know some of these guys are seniors this is their last they, they're not going to play in college this is going to be their last high school football game period and I want to play as long as I can as Mon not Monterio Elson but man man Omari and Robinson you see the explosiveness from him I mean this guy is a great athlete uh, the safety you know there was some video of him at Alabama camp this summer and Nick Saban was working with him one on one. Wow. Uh, he was getting individual instruction from Nick Saban. Doesn't get much bigger than that if, if you're Elston to learn and from a guy like him and Robinson. But I tell you, Parkview, they've kept their, their starters out. Shiloh tried to swim it away from their playmakers, but they got so many it's hard to do so. They're on the first down here, first play of the second half on offense. They got Robinson streaking away. One man to beat to the pylon. Touchdown, Parkview. He's in again. That'll send a message. One play, you bring Montario Elston across the formation. You saw, I saw two, three Saints defenders going with him, and why not? I mean, every time Elston's gotten the ball, he's made a big play. All eyes are on him. Instead, it's Amarian Robinson cutting across the field, going deep. And how about that throw from Eric McGee? You say he may have found something with this young man. I mean, he, he can throw it. He's got a nice arm. That was a perfect throw. Led Robinson perfectly, and that's another Parkview touchdown. And I think it goes unnoticed as well because of the so many playmakers that, yeah, you just have to air it out and they go get it. But, no, he's thrown it well. He's not really had them having to work to make plays. That one was on the money. And then Robinson did the rest, dancing, breaking a tackle. Well, when those guys are in open space, either streaking down the sideline or in the middle of the field, they are oh so difficult to bring down. Talent makes coaches look brilliant and smart, and you, but you start looking at this Parkview roster going down the list, the number of guys that are going to be playing on Saturday, and that's not in, to take anything away from Brad Bolding or, or Bobby Bolding or Clay Bimberg, offensive oh, coordinator, yeah, defensive right. coordinator. They, they are great coaches, coaches but I, I've joked with uh, Bimberg before. Uh, they get the ball out in the flat to Montario Elson, and he breaks a couple tackles, goes 70. I'm like, man, you are the best offensive coordinator I've ever seen. What a <laughs> brilliant play call. And he just laughed. He's like, yeah, just give it to the playmaker and let him go. It makes me look like a genius. Well, I will say, though, to, to his defense also, he sets up plays to give his playmakers opportunities. I'm sure it helps when you got so many of them out on the field. Aguilar to attempt another extra point. The seventh try, and this one's blocked. Holman coming in, and he's just headed straight to the sideline. He knows there's plenty of work to do. That's what coach just told us. Barnard said, we're not going to quit. And that's effort. That's an effort play. That's that's coming in hard from the edge and gets there, gets his hands up, and blocks the, the uh, kick. And you wouldn't expect anything else uh, from Holman. The junior on special teams picking up the block. It remains a 42-point ball game now, 48-6 to six Parkview. It's been all Parkview. Shallow's had a couple of big moments, one being that deep pass to Holman. But it's the turnovers that have been oh so costly. If you love seeing these high school sports championships live and also on demand, please consider making a gift to Arkansas PBS today. You can go to my Arkansas or my ARPBS.org slash donate to donate or you can call that number on the screen 1-800-662-2386 we talked about there being zero room for error the only good thing in that for Shiloh is that they scored quickly they scored on one play that's about the only bright spot for Shiloh Parkview is just firing on all cylinders nice crowd here tonight 6420 is the official number a lot of Parkview fans here making the easy trip, you know, across the capital city to come see the game at War Memorial Stadium. A little tougher for Shiloh to get here from Springdale. But good crowd here tonight. 
Well, Williams trying to give his home faithful something to cheer about. They made the trek from Northwest Arkansas. They won't get it there. Not a great return to the 22, and that's it. Parkview flying the ball. They fly on defense, special teams, and then offense. Oh, so explosive. Well, we, we've mentioned it many times. Shiloh's got to make plays here. Clock has not started. Well, it hasn't. It, I mean, I thought it runs continuously no matter what, and then we're not doing it. Now they're starting it and shouldn't stop it. So I guess it's whenever there's a play from scrimmage, not the, the kickoffs and such. It's continuing to run now after the incompletion, so there it is. I've been at games on, on Friday nights. There's a touchdown. They keep it going after the touchdown. I mean, yeah, they, they right. get out there and they, I mean, it just does not stop unless there's, a, a, you know, an injury that requires, you know, some attention that takes a while to get them out there. But it is truly a running clock. Well, Creighton still in at quarterback. He's going to give it off to Williams up the middle. And that front line of Parkview still hanging tight there. Driving hard. That's not to say, you know, there may be some games on Friday nights when that mercy rules in effect. A clock operator may want to get home early, and they may not be doing <laughs> it right. exactly to the letter That's of right. the rules. So um, maybe a little different occasion on some Friday nights. A little trigger happy for some of those guys, I guarantee you. Creighton from the gun again, going to throw. Got all kinds of time. Now he's going to tuck it and run. He'll slide near the first down marker, about a yard shy. Going up fourth down. Started the slide just a hair too soon. It's not where you hit the ground. It's where you start the slide, right there. And so that was before he got to the marker. Good call. That was a good mark from the side judge there. Falls at the 31-yard line. They got to get it to the 32. Pistol formation for Shiloh. On a fourth down and one. Got to get this first down after the Saints. They're going to give it off. They got near the first down. I think he's got it to the left side. Bo Williams and it's close. I don't know. I don't think he got it. They met him in the hole. That was a heck of a collision. Well, I tell you, from the, the initial spot from the far judge, I thought he got it, but as it came closer, he didn't get it. You're right. I'm not sure. I'm about to watch a replay. I do not know who met Bo Williams in the hole. Bo is a strong dude, and that. Was a good lick. Number four for Parkview, Kobe Davis. Middle linebacker comes in, 45 tackles on the year, and that was a collision because Bo was strong. Well, that'll send it to a break. 48 to six as we will step aside for the timeout. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by. Southern Loft is a proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS. It is our mission to tell your story by adding color with our furniture. And that's why Southern Loft is a different kind of furniture store. For more information, go to mysouthernloft.com. Give your family a once-in-a-lifetime experience at the Little Rock Zoo at Arkansas's largest lantern festival. Glow wild at the Little Rock Zoo. After dark, bring your family to a radiant wonderland where imagination sparks. Discover 40 new lighted mystical creatures and returning favorites at Glow Wild. A once-in-a-lifetime experience. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. When you choose Conway Regional, you're choosing a healthcare partner rooted in your community. With nine primary care locations in five counties, we believe in building lasting relationships centered on trust and personalized care. Let our family care for yours. Vaping addicts you to nicotine and can prematurely aid your lungs to those of a 70-year-old. Don't get lost in the fog. Learn more about the hazards of vaping at projectpreventar.org.
Get your live action photos from the game at myarpbs.org slash photos. Grab free downloads. Have prints made. It's a great championship keepsakes. Myarpbs.org slash photos. So out of this timeout, the clock stops. And it, we've given word, so the clock will only stop for timeouts and scores. And it will resume when the offensive series begins. If a score occurs, it will stay stopped until the first down play clock is initiated. And then we'll continue until a timeout resumes. Probably need to send that out to all the uh, scorekeepers across the state because I know I've been in some games where that thing starts and it doesn't stop until <laughs> they're hitting the bus. There's, there's, there's no stopping it. The turnover on downs, man, you've got an eagle eye. You, you saw that, the fourth down stop, Parkview, defense, and all, I mean, every, every facet of the game, they are playing at a high level. McGee. Hand it off at the middle, and we're going to have a flag. Looks like someone might have jumped early. Shiloh did it again, where they uh, their defensive lineman. Offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. In unison, will change their uh, gap, and uh, when they do that, and they all jump at once, it's it's hard for an offensive lineman. You got to be really focused and, and know that it's coming, and not move. And sometimes teams have been known to. Make a little noise when they do that. That will cause the offensive lineman to to uh, jump. So we saw that. Yeah. Saw that in the Alabama Auburn game. I don't know if you saw that going on. There was an Auburn player that, that clapped in the backfield that caused a fumble by Alabama in a, in a game. So yeah. you see that happen a lot at all levels. Sometimes they don't catch it. But I was watching one of the games on uh, I think it was the SEC game, and they said once the offensive team has set that their uh, one of their signals to snap the ball is a clap or a double clap right. defense can no longer do that right they can't do a clap to sig for a signal on defense that's the offensive signal you can't do that so we're going to give it off to ashford up the middle look at a couple he's up second down and long you know something we haven't mentioned and i may eat my words for this later really haven't been a ton of penalties for, from either side just a handful of false starts and face masks and one penalty for five yards for Shiloh Christian. Five penalties for 35 yards for Parkview. They had that one holding call, and I think the rest were all pre-snap fractions. On that, in the face mask. In the face mask. And that was the five-yard variety. That's right. Well, here we go. It actually is third down and 12 from the gun. McGee, the twins to both sides, going to throw. Into the flat, he's got Elston. Who else? Makes a man miss, makes a couple. Hit from behind. He's going to be shy of the line to gain. I don't know how he does it. I mean, look here. How many Saints are there to make the tackle? There's one. There's two. He goes left. They both miss. And it's a guy from behind that makes the tackle finally. Catches him from behind. Well, a rare tackle from behind because if he's got his jets on, you're not catching him. But there he's trying to pivot, make his plant foot, get him from behind. Fourth down. Power formation. McGee under center. Gonna fake the handoff, gonna keep it. Pass play, right side, in zone! Touchdown, Kyrick Folks! I was told Bobby Petrino's in the house. If he is, that's a Bobby Petrino play. They ran it right here at this stadium, called it Cowboy to Ryan Mallett to Chris Gregg. That's right. And, I mean, he ran it to perfection. Hides the ball, it's like he hands it off, stands there calmly, lets his tight end come free, zips it down the field. Touchdown Parkview. You can't blame Shiloh. They're just trying desperately to stop that run up the middle. They think for sure it's coming. The play action to fake and McGee executed perfectly and folks did the rest as the extra point from Aguilar is up and good. It is 55 to 6. I asked and Troy Mitchell delivered. I was wondering what the largest margin of victory in a state championship game is. It's 60 points. Junction City beat Desart 60 to nothing. Right now we're at 55 to six, so we're not quite there. It's a uh, 49 points, so they're 11 points behind a couple of scores. But it, this one is uh, all Parkview tonight. Um, really, the big. Well, I say that from the beginning, it was kind of back and forth. Shallow got a big stop after they got forced to three and out. They got that the field goal. Yep, that's right. And then it just really got away from the turnovers is what you could key in on. You could say that Parkview just forced them, and they're that good, and, that, and that you could argue that, and certainly wouldn't be wrong. But Shiloh has not helped themselves trying to make plays. Too many turnovers, and Parkview's will run away with this one. 
Aguilar is getting a workout tonight. <laughs> all the extra points. And he even got to kick an ex or a field goal. He also handles all the duties on the uh, kickoffs. Shallow Christian. About 21 minutes left in regulation. This one's all but in the books. Look it off. It'll be Bo Williams back deep. Wants a big return. He's going to take it on the sideline. Breaks one tackle. He'll lunge forward to the 35. What a hard nosed run for the senior. Hey, he's had a great career here at Charlotte Christian. Great running back. Had great stats in the title game last year. Pleasure to watch Bo Williams. He's got uh, 13 carries tonight for 33 yards. Been tough for him to get going in the Saints offense. Parkview's defense has just been outstanding, just like they have been all year long. Uh, People talk about their offense, but this defense giving up on average about 10 points per game. It's tough to run on them. They came into the game giving up 2.15 yards per carry. Tonight it is, I'm sure it's close to that. Creighton's going to throw here on first down, and he is flushed and throws it away. I guess that it was close to that. It is exactly that. They're averaging 2.1 wow. yards per carry, the Saints are tonight. So it's right on the average of Parkview. Very consistent there for the defense. It just goes to show you, you know, this is a team that, and no knock to other teams in 5A that they've played, but, you know, a, a team that would be fun and could put against other teams in the state. You mentioned it could be the, very the top team in the state. And they're doing this at this level on this stage. It's very impressive. The, the closest game they played all year was against Bryant, at Bryant, and beat Bryant. Clock rolling, 5.33 remaining in the third. Creighton going to throw on second down. Flushed, in trouble. Just really threw that one away. Desperation heave, got it away. You know, if he'd, if he'd noticed and had time, he had Griffin Mason in the flat there with no one on him, but I don't think he saw him. Well, the, the man defending on him saw the quarterback scrambled and came up to tackle Creighton. And by that point, he was running for his life and then saw the additional defender coming and just got rid of it. Did not see uh, that he was wide open. But that's what pressure does to a quarterback. And then once you're under pressure all night long and you get hit all night long, you start making bad decisions. That clock in your head speeds up like, I got to get rid of the ball. They're coming. It just it impacts that's so, why it's so valuable to get pressure on the quarterback early and often. Parkview jumped the snap that time. Mason trying to make some plays in the open field. On third down, he gets a little bit. Still going to be shy by about six yards. It's fourth down and six to go. They're going to be putting the football away. They are. The Marion Robinson's going back in the punt formation. Looks like Penny's back there with them. Both of those guys have returned a, a punt this year for a score. Griffin Mason to punt the football away. The third time today, a low line drive kick. Now if it's fielded, it's too far out of. That's a great kick. Great kick. Kicked it out of bounds, smart. Doesn't let Robinson return it. That's couldn't ask for anything better than that right there. You know, the, the low line drive from our angle, I didn't know it was so far out of bounds, but I thought, boy, if you give Robinson time to run, that's not good. But Griffin Mason knew what he was doing. Kicks it way down to the 20. Well, the 19's where they spot it. Parkview got this one well in hand. Trying to chase that 60 point record in a state title, most the largest win. I wonder what the most points scored in a championship game on. You know Junction City put up 60. I bet there have been some 70s most points scored in a state championship game. Most points scored in a championship game. Uh, got our crack crew working on that now. Oh, the center jump. That oh, was the right guard. And it was the same thing again. That's Shiloh defense, 73, start. 74, Offense. 73, Bunker, 73 points, most scored in the championship game. Parkview's going to try to chase it tonight. That was back, way back in 1949. Well, that was just the other day. <laughs> 51, 24, 74 years ago. Goodness gracious. Ashford gets the call on the carry this time on first and 15. 
Couple yards, not a whole lot. Clock continuing to tick. 305 remaining in the third. I don't think Parkview's going to score three more touchdowns. I think that record's safe tonight. I imagine they're going to keep handing off the football and put this one to bed. But I tell you what, those two running backs, Ashford and Settles, they can go. They'll give it to Ashford again. Back to back carries for Jaden Ashford. It's a good push back to the original line of scrimmage, but this brings up third down and 10. Well, I tell you, we mentioned this throughout the broadcast many, many times. You felt like it was going to be tough for Shiloh to come back and, and against a team like Parkview. Back to back, trying to chase him back to back state titles. Shiloh just ran into a brick wall tonight. A buzzsaw. I mean, that's, that's what it is. It is a buzzsaw. Offensively, they're outstanding with all the athletes and the speed, the power of the offensive line. And then defense. They are sound defensively and make it tough. They go the design screenplay to Folks overthrown. It'll bring up fourth down, and for the first time tonight, Parkview's going to punt. That's right. We'll get to see uh, a Marion Robinson punt. He, uh, he's does it on special teams, returning game, playing safety. We've seen him at quarterback, a little bit at wide receiver, but he's also their punter. He holds on the extra points and the field goals. He's uh, some guy that they trust to, to do a lot of things. A do-it-all guy. Yeah. Well, he averages 37 yards per punt. So that's not half bad at any level, really. As he gets set to punt it away for the first time. It'll be Holman coming up on the play, makes it at the 50-yard line, trying to get to the edge, and he is thrown down at the 43-yard line. So Shiloh will have the ball in Parkview territory. They have not been in Patriot side of the field many times tonight. No, even the, the one touchdown that they have, that was a long throw, 37-yard uh, throw. So they, they got it down to the 37. So this may be their, their second best position for the game. I was trying to figure out what Parkview's defensive tackle was doing. It was like he was lining up to go play right guard for Shiloh. <laughs> oh, they're missing a right guard. That's what he was doing. They were like, we're missing a right guard. He's like, I'll play right guard for you. That's hilarious. That's exactly what he was doing. Oh. Right. First and 10 for Shiloh. Just trying to get in the end zone again. It's Baker, the quarterback. He'll keep it. Oh, doing up the middle left side, a yard perhaps. What impresses me is Parkview still standing strong in the defense. They're still flying to the football. You can see a lot of guys late in a game like this, just content with, with laying down. You're up big. They're still going hard at it. Looking out there, they've, they've still got their starters out there. That's Alex Martin, Marlon Liddell, Andre Williams, Jeremy Evans. They're starting defensive line. Shotgun formation for Baker. The lefty goes across his body. It's another interception. Tipped around and picked off for Parkview. Omar Anderson, the senior, with his first interception of the year. Got a little help there on the carom, and Parkview takes it away. Yeah, I thought That's Parkview the had the third quarter. another player that was going to pick it off, and then it pops up in the air, and Omar's there to get his pick. 55 to 6. Parkview's got it back. We head to the fourth quarter. 15 minutes are left in the books. Looks like we have some new help in the marketing department. Evans. Hi, I'm Susie Arrow with Everview GMC. I think you need to work on your line better. How about you do it? Family owned, customer friendly. Family owned, no family. <laughs> Come see, see us at Everett Buick GMC. I-30 at, at Alcoa Exit. But bless everybody. During the
the past year, we've been traversing the natural state with our cinematic drone from lakes and rivers, waterfalls, scenic byways, mountains, swamps, overlooks, and towering rock formations. This unique documentation of all four seasons from all four corners of the state with an aerial cinematic perspective will give you, the viewer, an Arkansas adventure like never before, exploring Arkansas from above. Download the PBS video app or watch online. Is there a program you'd like to watch again? Maybe a performance you didn't get a chance to see? Well, now you can with PBS Passport, a terrific member benefit that lets you stream more than 1,000 hours of PBS and local programming on your computer or through the PBS app on your phone, tablet, smart TV, or streaming device. All your favorites wherever, whenever you want. And with your qualifying contribution, you'll help make the great programs on this station possible. Go online and get your PBS Passport today. Join the football conversation on social media. Use the hashtag ARPBSSports. Well, Tyler Cass is down on the sidelines. We'll get a quick report from him before we begin the fourth quarter. Yeah, you guys, you might have heard of a turnover chain. A lot of teams have something <laughs> to celebrate. A turnover, Parkview, they've got this whole outfit. It's not just for turnovers, it's for any big play. So, you know, it's gotten a lot of work out today. They figured they might as well give me a shot at it, too. <laughs> Tyler, I love it. Get the turnover chain's on. It's a little extracurricular playing field on the outside. A little penalty thrown, but as we begin the fourth quarter, Parkview churning. And their band churning. They are excited. Now they, uh, the fans are up. Bench is over there looking over here, getting the fans up and rowdy. Maybe the fourth quarter, but they're not going to stop. We got any uh, clarification from one of my friends out there in the coaching world? Said for the clock not to stop at all. It happens, but both coaches have to agree before the game that to be the case. So that I knew I wasn't crazy. I knew I've seen that before. That is something that's uh, agreed upon before the game. I'm guessing you probably don't get that in a state final game. No. I don't know if that would be a conversation either coach would think to have. <laughs> that's fair. That's right. Settles the carry up the middle. Well, you can really point at this part of the lineup and, and key in on a handful of guys that have contributed. Settles has had his fair share of, of carrying the, the football. Elston's made plays. Robinson, all those guys have found the end zone. It's been a whole team effort. I also got clarification during the half about the uh, overturn of the video replay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they said the receiver, did, or the receiver being the defensive back of Marion Robinson, did not complete the catch. He said that uh, they didn't have it. They saw evidence that the ground, uh, he didn't take, you know, have full control of the ball until that he got up. And so they felt like he did not complete the catch, did not have it long enough, basically, for it to be an interception. Interesting. And I still feel like I, I would have been shocked even if I'd known that beforehand, just because you feel like to overturn something like that, you need a lot of evidence. But they saw it, felt like they saw enough. One of the keys for them was watching it in real time. You know, we kept seeing it slow motion. They said when you watch it in real time, it was such a bang, bang play that he honestly didn't have the ball that long in real time. You know, he, he, he caught it, fell to the ground, and was attempting to get up, and it squirted. If you remember, I thought it was an incompletion, perhaps. He did, at, in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Robinson to punt just for the second time today. And it'll be a fair catch called for by Carter Holman back at his own 23 yard line and with 9.17 remaining in the football game. Parkview is oh so close to being crowned back to back state champs. Maybe the most impressive performance they've had this year. I mean, they've they've had some some blowouts and like we've said, this is the uh, 12th time out of 14 games that they have uh, mercy ruled an opponent. Uh, but. I mean, for them to do this in a state championship game against a very good Shiloh Christian team, that's an impressive effort by Parkview. Maybe their most complete game. Maybe it's something uh, Tyler could ask Coach Bolding after the game. If he feels like, in his opinion, this was their most complete game of the season. 55-6, I, mean, to six, I guess he could say, look, we didn't shut them out. We, we made a mistake there on defense, allowing them to score because they have uh, shutouts and opponents this year. I was going through their schedule right now to take a look at some of their uh, scores this year because uh, undefeated record 
52-21 over Harbor in the opening game of the season. Beat Bryant week two, 28-27, closest game they played all year. Beat North Little Rock, 52-14. Beat Hot Springs, 54-7. Beat Park uh, the Queen, 55-7. Beat Hope, 56-6. Parkview beat High, Texarkana High, or Arkansas High, 64 to six. Magnolia, 42 to nothing. Hot Springs Lakeside, 42 to seven. It's a good Lakeside team too. Camden Fairview, the first matchup, 42 to 14. Then they got in the playoffs, shut out Alma, 35 to nothing. Beat Mills, 35 to six. Beat Camden Fairview for a second time, 42 to 13. And then well, now it's 55 to six. Here. So this is a team that's put up a lot of points, 64 against uh, Texarkana. They've scored in the 50s a couple of times, 56 to six over Hope, 55 to seven over the Queen, 54 to seven over Hot Springs, 52 on North Little Rock. So they've been in the 50s in the first game of the year. They put up 50 on the scoreboard several times this year. Baker trying to go over the top on first down. He overthrows his intended receiver. I think Penny got a hand on that. I think he saw the ball, went up with one hand, and knocked it away. I think he gets credit for a PBU on that one. It was Carter Henley, the intended receiver. When you go back, though, to Parkview's uh, schedule, those first three games were against 7A opponents. Talk about getting battle-tested, if you will. And that just ran through everyone. You know, they average, Parkview does, scoring 46 points a game and only giving up 9.8. Well, they did better on both. They scored more than 46, and they've held their opponent to less than 10. You talk about playing a complete game, I, I think you're spot on. Coach Bolding has said before, they want to have a program that is like a 7A program. And that's why he plays 7A teams. He wants that 7A mentality. They they team camp in the summer with 7A teams. They want to go up against the best because well, he feels like they are the best. And so they want to be challenged against the biggest and the best teams in the state. That prepares them for games like tonight. Third down and three for Shiloh with six and a half to go. Oh, Williams to carry again, first down yardage. Tell you what, Bo's still running hard. There's no quit in that young man. Well, this is his last football game of his high school career, and so he wants to make the most of it. Well, there's clock time on the clock. He's being sure he's going to make the most of it. Well, he's going to play on Saturdays. It may be uh, at the Division II level, but there are teams that have already offered him, and he'll make a decision on where he wants to go. But... Bo is a fantastic runner. I and mean, I, I've enjoyed all season watching him run. Well, and you'll get, most people get a good chance to watch him inside the state of Arkansas because all his offers have come from schools with inside the state boundaries. UAPB's offered him a preferred walk on at Arkansas State, and then he's got Arkansas Tech, SAU, OBU, and Harding. Those are all pretty good programs at the Division II level. Oh, by the way, Harding won today, and they advanced wow. seven to six. They scored on a quarterback sneak late in the fourth quarter. Extra point gave them the victory. They held on and got a stop. And they won seven to six and advanced to the final four for the second time in program history. How about that? A defensive battle. Baker's the quarterback this time goes up the middle. It was two of the best defenses in D2 playing each other today. So not a surprise that it was a low scoring game. But Harding had a long Harding like drive in the fourth quarter. Ate up like seven and a half minutes. And they chew up the clock, go down there, and score the winning touchdown. A lot like, what was it, an Iowa-Illinois matchup or whatever, that low-scoring <laughs> defense against defense. Hey, some people really like that. We got a low-scoring game in the Big Ten Championship. Michigan playing Iowa. Of course, Iowa's got a great defense. It's only 10 to nothing at the half. Iowa doing a good job of slowing down that Michigan attack, but not able to put any points on the board. Third down and four. Baker going to throw. The second time today, nice tight spiral, threads the needle, still on his feet, all the way down to the 10 yard line. That's Cohen Beach, the freshman. Good concentration on this catch. There are two Parkview defenders. He squeezes it in. They fail to make the tackle, catches it, comes on in, gets them down inside the 10. Hello, trying to make the most of their trip here to the state final, trying to get into the end zone. Bo Williams trying to do it. Undercut, still on his feet. Did they rule him down? They did at the two-yard line. He's, he's wanting to say he wasn't down, but there's a defender underneath you, and they're keeping your knee from hitting the ground. They're going to call it. Bo wants another touchdown. He 
He's got 40 touchdowns this season, 37 on the ground, three receiving. He wants to one more time in his high school career find that end zone. They'll get a chance. They give it off up the middle, and he has stood up right at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go for Bo Williams, and he won't get it, at least on that carry. The Parkview defense has pride. They don't, they don't care. They're up 50 points. They don't want they want a goal line stand right here. I think really for Shiloh it's more about pride just trying to get some points on the board before this one comes to an end. Parkview, it's been all Parkview, but Shiloh's trying to pound it in there once more. They've only done it once on a touchdown to Carter Holman. Third down and goal from the two. Baker's the quarterback. Williams the tailback from the gun. They'll give it to Williams, makes a man miss to the end zone, a touchdown to Shiloh. That's Bo Williams in. Good, tough running. Made a guy miss, good cut back, gets in the end zone, getting hugs from his teammates. They know how much that meant to him. Good to see him get into the end zone in his last game. You love to see that. What a great cut from Williams, a hard-nosed run. He broke two tackles, a third tackle, just to get into the end zone. Well, it, depending on what happens moving forward, very well could be Williams' last carry of his high school career. We'll see. He may go here on the two-point conversion. We'll see. I bet he wants it. Shotgun for Baker. He whispers in Williams' ear. You wonder if he's going to it. The play clock has expired. Parkview's coaches were like, and it had expired for like four seconds. <laughs> and, and everybody's like, what's going on? Five yard penalty, well, retry. While Baker was whispering in Williams' ear, he might have been, should have been snapping the football. Well, they didn't know the play. <laughs> I bet the play was going to Bo. He better know the uh, play. That's about right. to hand it off to him. So now the two point try will be from the seven, or around the eight, I guess. Shiloh's going to go for it from the gun. Baker whispers instructions to Williams again. Going to go a little option play to Williams, and it's blown up. He's still got the football on his feet. Patriots everywhere, and they finally bring him down to the 11. The two-point try fails. It's one of those defenses, and that's a, a great example. It's like Parkview's playing with 12 or 13 guys on the field. They, they just swarm. They're everywhere. You break a tackle, there's another one. You break a tackle, here comes another one. You, you, Sometimes you think once you break one tackle, you got room to run, right? Not, not against this defense. It is just a swarming, fast defense that's always attacking. What you see is Jonas Nance and Bo Williams walk off the field. Two seniors that have played their tails off to make it to the state final. Just not enough in the tank, and you really can't blame them. Like you mentioned, it, perfect word was they ran into a bus saw in Parkview today. Getting another hug from one of his big offensive linemen. And what a year. Lost to Farmington and didn't win that conference title. And some people rolled them off. They were going to have a tough road. But for them to go on the road to beat Valley View, then Pine Bluff the next week to get here, it shows you a lot about this Saints team and just how resilient they are. Well, they got a lot to look forward to. Freshman quarterback in Cole Creighton. Carter Holman's just a junior. They got guys that will be back to make a huge impact. Expect to see Shiloh continuing to make runs here at the state title. Well, they're not going anywhere, that's for sure. I mean, they've been here now five straight years. I'm not betting against them to make it six next year. On this kickoff return, lots of room outside edge. That's Jermaine Penny. He's still on his feet. What a return. They finally bump him out of bounds at the 30. Well, you tried to quick kick it away from the playmakers, but goodness, we've said it time and time again, they're all over the place. Elston was talking to him. He's like, I'm, I'm blocking this up this way. I wanted you to cut this way. Why did you? Good look at it. Yeah, Penny, uh, one of those speedsters I uh, said earlier, uh, he runs a 10.7100. 10 he is fast. And, and when he got in the open field, you could see how quick he was. Well, with the time rolling down, they may not have to snap it again. I mean, as far as they may not have to on a play again. They could need if they wanted to. It looks like they're going to run a play. A new quarterback in. They're going to hand it off up the middle. 
Yeah, I noticed they were uh, pulling some guys in off the bench. It's Emmanuel Bunting, the quarterback. Yeah, he's, he's their true backup. Of course, Amari and Robinson's played some quarterback. But I think Bunting's maybe their quarterback of the future. He's a sophomore, so he's got two more years after this. And yeah, what a great career for Eric McGee. You know, last year he was the state tournament MVP or the state finals MVP. Back-to-back -back championships as a junior and senior as the quarterback for Parkview. He is a uh, man. He's been outstanding. I think uh, you see a, a uh, maybe a little sleeper in him. I don't think he gets enough credit at Parkview for what he does. Bunting going to give it off to Kobe Davis, the senior left side, inside the 29-yard line with a minute and 11 seconds to go. Yeah, I can't let the snap it one more time. Uh, mo one more time. Uh, that was just. Uh, I think the, We'll have our MVP announcement in a little bit. Who, who would you vote? Who would you cast your vote as the MVP of this game? I think when you look at how explosive he was and fun to watch, Elston. I think you got a Montario Elston. Uh, we're unanimous. That uh, would be an easy pick for me. He's a He was a game changer tonight. He's been doing it all season, and he was entertaining. I mean, if you just tuned in to watch this football game, he, he had you on your edge of the seat. And he, there were a couple of wow runs, and wild moves that you're just like man what a player kobe davis doesn't want this one to end just yet into the end zone touchdown parkview but there is a flag dropped it on the 12 may have been a receiver holding downfield you know and sometimes wes when you have big explosive plays like that you wonder was it the hold that allowed that to happen and a lot of times it is First angle I saw, couldn't see anything around the 12 yard line. We're looking over at the shallow bench. Of course, they want to accept it. Here's a replay. During the run, holding yep. offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense, 15 yard penalty. The first down, Parkview. Third down, Parkview. There's a good look at it. Got number 23 right there. Actually, it occurred about the 20 yard line. And it, it did. It, it kept that cornerback from coming over. And I hope they didn't call it for that. Celebration. Was that just a celebration? Why they called that? I didn't see. I'm not sure. So not only wipes it off, they're going to tack on 15 more. Not that it really matters, but. One more play. I guess they, they may not even snap it. Will they even have to snap? No, they, they don't even have to snap it. They're going. I mean, yeah, that's a good move. Coach Bolden got his Gatorade bath, and we're going to go meet at midfield and shake hands. Fifty-five to six. Parkview knocks off Shiloh Christian as the clock expires. Little Rock Parkview back to back 5A state champs as they knock off Shiloh Christian. Here in the 5A final, we'll continue here with our post-game players, uh, MVPs, and some interviews. We'll be right back. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on the Arkansas PBS Sports. Hi, I'm Eric Gorgeous from A Craftsman's Legacy. Yeah, let's make it happen, man. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. All right. Yeah, let's rock and roll. I like flames. I cannot stress enough how hot it is. <laughs> That's beautiful. Show your love for Create and its commercial free programming by becoming a member of your local public television station. Simply call the number below or visit createtv.com to make a donation. It's viewers like you that make Create possible. Thank you. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. When you choose Conway Regional, you're choosing a healthcare partner rooted in your community. With nine primary care locations in five counties, we believe in building lasting relationships centered on trust and personalized care. Let our family care for yours. Vaping addicts you to nicotine and can prematurely aid your lungs to those of a 70-year-old. Don't get lost in the fog. Learn more about the
about the hazards of vaping at projectpreventar.org. Give your family a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience at the Little Rock Zoo at Arkansas's largest lantern festival. Glow wild at the Little Rock Zoo. After dark, bring your family to a radiant wonderland where imagination sparks. Discover 40 new lighted mystical creatures and returning favorites at Glow Wild, a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Southern Loft is a proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS. It is our mission to tell your story by adding color with our furniture. And that's why Southern Loft is a different kind of furniture store. For more information, go to mysouthernloft.com. New documents are being digitized every day. And every day, the DNA databases get bigger. Sometimes the most moving revelations come from the paper trail. Sometimes some of the most shocking revelations come from DNA. I think I found out a little bit too much. (laughs) That's what makes us special. The magical way that we combine genealogical research with genetic research. And we're the first program in the world to do that. Without your support, there would be no Finding Your Roots. And without your support, there would be no PBS. Do you have any idea what the book is worth? Danielle Musselman here, host of Arkansas Treasures, where we share the wacky, weird, and wild collectibles and antiques from around our state and find out what they're worth. So that adds up to a little bit of money. Wow. Watch on Arkansas PBS, the PBS app, or on the Arkansas PBS website. I said I was not going to say wow, but I did anyway. A real-life mystery in Mulberry Springs. Who is Sammy the Sloth? My science teacher is a robot. You've got to be kidding me. Troublemakers from another planet. From another planet? We're on the case. Thank you, Mystery League, for solving this mystery. During the past year, we've been traversing the natural state with our cinematic drone from lakes and rivers, waterfalls, scenic byways, mountains, swamps, overlooks, and towering rock formations. This unique documentation of all four seasons from all four corners of the state with an aerial cinematic perspective will give you, the viewer, an Arkansas adventure like never before, exploring Arkansas from above. Download the PBS video app or watch online. I think it's important for Arkansas PBS to have sports because it provides sports on a greater platform to the entire community. And it also gives people in various other communities an opportunity to see other schools and other athletes and to have a greater appreciation for not just their own community, but the sports that are available across the state of Arkansas. There are so many lessons that sports provides and it's one of the reasons why it's so important to the next generation of athletes coming up. For students, it's always more fun to include the arts when you're learning. I mean, just to have expression, to see different forms of entertainment, it always just makes it more fun. And when I heard that my mother was recording different sections that teachers were going to see, I was excited for the students who will get to use it in their classroom. Arkansas PBS is a place where everyone can see themselves, where everyone can find themselves, where everyone can be a part of something bigger than themselves. Hi, this is Christopher Kimball on the set of Milk Street Television. Not for profit channels like Creator Bound by Mission. That's to inform, educate, enlighten, and also enrich. So please support Create by also supporting your local public television station. Simply click the donate button at createtv.com for more information. And that's about all there is to it. I told you it's easy. You see, it doesn't take so long. And by the way, thank you. Wedge at 55 to 12 over Shiloh Christian to claim back to back 5A state titles. I'm JB Brazil alongside Wes Moore. We've had Tyler Cass on the sidelines. Wes, it was Parkview really from the get go, and they never stopped. No, Parkview rolls, and the, the stats indicate that. You see them holding up that trophy, holding it high. Coach Bolding right there in the middle with all those guys. Back to back titles. Look at that smile on Coach Bolding. It's all about the kids for him. I know he's so happy for those guys. 
an excited group. To wait so long and then to get to do it back to back. That's got and I asked I had him on we had him on the radio last week on the on the zone and I, uh, I asked him the difference in the feeling from last year to this year because you know last year it, there was a lot of pressure because they'd never done it. Now to go back to back, what's that feel like? And, is I mean, it just every year special. You know, every year is just a, it's different. It's a different group of kids because you had some seniors that left and some younger guys that stepped up this year. But you see the stats and it tells the story. 444 total yards to 217. Shallow got some uh, some yards through the air. Two big plays really throwing the ball. Uh, Park you had 270 passing. Another big game for Eric McGee. The one stat that's not on there is turnover. Yep, that's right. It was 5-0. Parkview wins that battle five to nothing, and they scored a touchdown off of all five. One of them picked six, but they got 35 of their points off the of turnovers. And, and you said it, it tells the story. I was going to going to lead into that with those turnovers. Definitely the difference in the game allowed Parkview to run away. They win it 55 to 12 for Shallow Christian. As we look here, Wes, a fun game. Parkview really had a lot of highlights, but Shallow Christian had a couple themselves. Yeah, it starts with defense. One of those turnovers right there. Cameron Settles playing quarterback, picks it off early in the game. Had a pick six later on. This is one of the uh, touchdowns early in the game. That was uh, Ashford. That made it 21 to nothing. Later on, Amari Robinson picks it up. Scoop almost scored, but very next play. They give it to Robinson. He scored anyway to make it 28 to nothing. Shiloh Christian late in the second quarter finally gets on the board. That's Carter Holman, 37 yards, 28 to 6. But Shiloh Christian, right, or uh, Parkview, I should say, right before the end of the half, just bam, bam, two quick scores. Eric McGee had a one yard plunge, and then there's Montario Elson. Goes 32 yards, 42 to 6 at the half. They scored, came out and scored on the uh, first possession of the second half. Mont Ontario Elson had gotten his, and then that was Omari and Robinson. And Bo Williams caps off his career late in the game, scores the touchdown. That got us to our final, 55-12. to 12. There they are, Parkview Patriots, celebrating for the second straight year. 55-12, to 12, and Tyler is down on the field. He's got the winning coach, Coach Bolden. Yeah, congrats, Coach Bolding, putting together a game like this. 55 points, I think 35 coming off turnovers. That complete of a game in a state title. What does it say about this team? We really challenged them all week, you know, to come out and play their best game. You know, they haven't been able to play four quarters in many games this year. And, you know, they got to play at least three tonight. And, they were, you know, those seniors that we got, man, have just been, the, you know, the nuts and bolts of our whole team and just kept this group together and kept them focused all year. And so, man, I can't say enough about them. We got some very, very talented players that love to compete, and it makes practice as fun every day. And then they just love to come out and perform. You mentioned the senior class. For you, getting a chance to send them out as state champs, what does that mean? Oh, man, that's the best thing in the world. I can't. That, that's what they wanted. We were able to achieve it, and I'm super proud of them. Last year it was all about breaking that streak. This year, going back to back. What does this mean to the Parkview community? It's huge. I mean, I mean it's huge for the whole Little Rock School District for this to happen, and, you know, Hey, we're going to continue to try to help make it happen every year as long as as long as I'm there. All right, congrats, Coach. Thank Thanks you. so much. Yeah. That was head coach Brad Bolding gets to win the title with his brother on staff as we head back down to Tyler for MVP of the game. Yeah, guys, we're joined now by the MVP for the second year in a row, Eric McGee. A chance to go out like this, two-time state champs, two-time MVP. What is this feeling like? Uh, it's a great feeling. I mean, we didn't put in the work all season, and it finally paid off again. So, you know, just, we're just going to go to the locker room and enjoy it, and we're going to cherish this moment for the rest of our lives. What does this mean just to the Parkview community, Little Rock as a whole, you guys going back-to-back? -back? Uh, I know it definitely means a lot to, to all, the, all the, uh, the community out there. But we, we, made it, we made it happen for them. And they, they encourage us, they support us. You see the big crowd out here, they out here supporting us. So we, we grateful for them to be out here for us. Obviously a lot of points put up on the board today, but the offense, defense had a big hand in that too. Just this whole, this team as a whole, how complete are you guys? Oh, we, we real complete. I say we got the best offense and best defense in the state. Yeah, that's it. All right, congrats, man. Thank you. Thank you. Well, not only is Parkview back-to-back -back state champions, Eric McGee back-to-back. -back. State Championship MVP, 
as he claims it once again, 10 of 14 passing, two touchdowns as you saw, as he celebrates with friends, family, and coaches. The final game of this weekend, but there are still some more state championships to be decided next weekend. This weekend was a lot of fun, but really looking forward to next weekend for the 4A and the 3A state title. You know, we've had uh, every team that's won so far the state championships finished off a perfect year, undefeated. Parkview, like that. Fayetteville, you had Rector, um, Igolo. Igolo, and then Greenwood last night. So every team so far has finished off a perfect season. Will it continue next week? Possibility. I think uh, Harding Academy has a chance. Boonville Boonville's has a chance. Yeah. So both uh, Prescott's got a loss, and then Rivercrest has a loss. So, yeah, it could continue next week with Harding Academy and Boonville. Wow, we will have to wait and see. That'll be one week away. Tune in for us on that broadcast then. But for tonight, that's going to do it. Parkview knocks off Shiloh 55 to 12. So for the rest of our production crew, JV Brazil alongside Westmore and Tyler Cass saying so long for the capital city here at War Memorial, where Parkview is back-to-back -back state champions. You've been watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas VBS Sports. Thank you.